Hey, are we live? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, we're live. Hello. What? So, do we have any viewers so far? <laughs> Wait, are, are we live or not? We don't really have viewers. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're so PG. We said, <laughs> Oh, so all right. Start up like the broadcast, you know, even though no one's watching yet, you know. Oh. Hey, all right. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Never mind then. So, welcome to Academy of Arts in San Francisco, Academy of Arts University, RU Esports. Yes, He's indeed. Brian, and I'm Carlos. Yep. And as you are, we are on our Twitch. We can get all our updates of what we're doing on Twitter and Facebook. But today, we are doing League of Legends 1v1. You know, it's a summer, summer semester. People are home, but we want to run something small for, like, the people that are still here. Yeah, we uh, keep uh, our community going, even though we have it's kind of a short yeah. attendance. But you know, we have to keep some fun entertainment well, you know, for like the people on the here. Summer, most people go go back home, like most of our like other commentators, Jamal, Dylan, etc., etc., etc. They're back home, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So we're here, you know, to entertain a little bit the people that are here. There's also the high school. Um, I forgot what it's called. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, the high school students. Uh, the school does uh, like a summer program for high school students who come out and take classes, and they can so still participate. So in they're they're including all of this. So awesome. So we'll be starting very soon. Uh, I think we have our first match, almost ready. Yeah. So um, whenever that starts, um, we have Quilly Hugs and Nightmare Hugs. I'm familiar with Quilly Hugs. Yes. Yeah, Not so much with the other player. Uh, kindred support is uh, very good. Oh, no. <laughs> so yeah, we know the uh, Quilly Hogs. He's uh, mostly jungler player. Yeah. He plays Cassix and Kindred in very weird ways. Um, so we'll probably some see something a little bit weird. Also, he'll probably be casting. Uh, yeah. Some uh, of the matches. Since uh, both of us are participating in the tournament, we will be taking a leave at some point. But you can hear uh -huh. that we are in pick. Of champs Michael. right now. Michael. Camera. No, the sound is really loud for the game. Um, yes. So, yeah, so we'll be going into Pick and Ban very soon. You know, there's a small delay. Uh, hopefully, Riot one day implements like <laughs> an actual tournament system for lands, because that doesn't exist yet. No. Uh, so yeah, I said like I'm expecting to see either Kindred or Cassix from, or maybe Echo because he plays a lot as well now. Uh, from Quilly Hogs, the other guy, I don't know, know yeah, what I to expect. Yeah, I do not know any of his picks or plays or anything of some sort. But I'm expecting, you know, surprise. it's it's a one v one tournament. I'm expecting usual like you know one v one picks. You know, there's always Caitlyn. I mean, she's not that good now uh, in one v ones. Like you know, like she's <laughs> been hit a lot by nerfs like you know like her base attack speed is lower as far as you know and also her attack speed gain is way lower now yeah so right. you know annoying in lane she's still annoying in lane but she's not as annoying as other other picks yeah there's there's better stuff i would say so um uh, apart from that like i don't know any other 1v1 picks you're expecting to see yeah i don't know i don't know maybe casio i would Cassio say because casio like if you sleep on her then she just walks on you yeah you well yeah uh so we're running 100 million first blood <laughs> or first hour whichever one happens first mm -hmm. should be fun we have to run this on summoner's rift because again uh if we run this on the era map there's no backing and that just doesn't work out very well in the end it's very it's very biased to who's gonna win mostly because like you start off with like two darn blades or whatever and you cannot get anything else yeah so a lot of times like certain champions just like overscale also something that i always like seeing in 1v1s which i totally just like oh my gosh i just remembered ad cannon was hit by very big nerf lately so i mean what was it i don't remember people would uh so <coughs> lower base attack speed because they don't want oh, to yeah. just throw shurikens really fast hurricane doesn't work anymore which doesn't matter in 1v1s uh but also they reward how his w works so it's way less base damage and that hurts a lot in the 1v1. And yeah, because he has no real scaling. It's, it's mostly for Well, the before it what happened, it. it was like a percentage of your AV. Mm -hmm. That was like the total damage. There was no base <laughs> damage. But it was like 40% of your AV, which even level 1 was good, increased up to like AV. Yeah. Now it's like a base value, which is kind of low, a percentage of your total AV, which is not very good, and yeah, percentage of AV. Yeah, because AV cannon AV. was 
attack speed, yeah. nothing else. Well, when hit. you get Blade of the Ring King, that's when you see the damage happen because yeah, it was it's forty. It's, on hit. It's, it's forty damage, but it's also forty damage. Like since it actually gives some AD now, it's it's better. So AD can still a thing once you get your Blade of the Ring King, but before <laughs> that, it's not as oppressive as before. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. I want to see if they already fixed or not. I'm trying to like. Right, cool. Starts in 10 seconds for us. But yes, uh, cool. I wonder if any of them chose anything to go with the current lethality. I mean, um, I'm pretty sure. I saw, I saw maybe some people. I saw some. I mean, Choga, you need to scale up. You need to get there. I mean, How about, like the wave clear though. Well, yeah, the E is pretty just freaking good. Easy wave clear. Just yeah. Ooh, maybe that's what I'm gonna play. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what I'm gonna play. Yeah, you, can, you also have to think that there's the hundred creep wave yeah. scenario. I'm gonna go for that. Like, I'm gonna go. Everyone's for that. probably gonna pick for kills, but like, there's two yeah. other factors you have to think about. Yeah, don't tell them I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do that probably, because mm -hmm. because that's fun. So yeah. I think the game is already started. We can start expectating now. Oh, we got Here nice, we oh, nice Diana new visuals and rise. All right, so let's see. I I'm gonna give this one to Rice, mostly in the sense that Rice as a character has a way way better laning phase than Diana. Yeah, Diana does not do anything until six. Yes, and apart from that, like uh, <coughs> the, the recent changes to Diana, which were really good in my opinion. Uh, they took out some of her power to like easily push. Like she doesn't get the twenty uh, attack speed anymore. She actually has to use a spell yeah. before she gets the attack speed. But when she gets her E, she gets way more, right? Yes. But at the same time, it's not a constant thing. You have to be using your spells, which even though the Q has less cooldown, you still have to be using your spells and you have to be like be weaving out attacks and stuff. And Rise is just gonna press W and just yeah, Rise is just he can push the wave. He has great harass and just he can overall. Just do yeah. better. Yeah, his wave clear especially is amazing. It's yeah. really good. <coughs> so we'll see what happens. I mean, I I gotta give it to Rice. I think Rice is definitely the better pick here. Yeah. I wish I could see their items, which I think happens if you press P. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, a hint out there. I think it's P. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, that's pause. That's oh. <laughs> oh my god. Never mind. <laughs> it's it's a button. Um yeah. doesn't matter. They both started Doran's ring, both of them. It's it's okay. Yeah. I'm I'm vouching on that. We'll see really soon, like FX will help us. Yeah. 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 Maybe someone started with corrupting potions or something I like that. I do not think so. Alright, so the e the Rice started with E already, which we know is like he just wants to push it out. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that's you know that's the best thing to do right now. Gets a nice E, gets a creep. Yeah, just push, push, and he doesn't have. Since it's a 1v1, there's no jungle pressure, so you can keep doing it and push into the tower. How I wish that was in every one of my games. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's just Rise gonna push throughout yeah. the entire phase. And you also gotta think that it pushes uh, Diana away from the creeps, because mm -hmm. she doesn't wanna be on top of her wave, or she's just gonna get hit for free damage. Yeah. With those bounces. And she obviously does not want that, because, you know. Like right here, we saw he got the Thunderlust proc and everything, but it didn't matter too much because he had the W up. Mm -hmm. But the W is still like, it has not the biggest cooldown, so. But it's yeah. not a big, um, it's not a big. So the biggest thing to worry about here is that Rice is right now one of the few mages that actually, with levels, he still gets. Ooh, not only he's right yeah. he's not only getting the base damage from his abilities, but he's also scaling a little bit with the mana, mm -hmm. and that's something that you always have to think about. Because like even though like Diana, yeah, she levels up, she can get a little bit more damage on her Q, but Rice not only gets the extra base damage, he also gets a little bit extra mana, which gives him that extra power. Yeah, just a little bit. Like there, nice combo. Doesn't amount to much because of the shield again. I don't think he still mm. fair trade. He took half the health and a potion. I can hear it very slowly. It's low. It's really low. I think the menus were just too high. Like, the volume on the menus was too high, and the volume of the game was already lowered. So, probably that's what happened. Anyways, back to the matchup. Nothing nothing interesting is happening, really. Um, Ooh, going for a 
good trade. Rise has no mana, so a good option. Neither of them have any mana. I think that Diana actually doesn't have enough mana for her E, and that's why she didn't use it there. Yeah. I'm like almost positive on that, because Diana's base mana is actually really low. Something to note of is that. Um, I'm not going to say the obvious right now, because uh, I think we already know what happened here. Yeah. But, um. Well, see. right, right, right. So none of them are opting to back at this point. They're just gonna lane it out yeah. until yeah. so happens. So, um, so yeah, like Bryce, we know like he has like, a bigger mana pool, so he's gonna be able to like harass a little bit more. And if they stay on the long term, I think he's just gonna win it out because he doesn't need. Yeah, you can like see like mana they're about the same, but health wise he can push S without worry. Still keep pushing. Yeah. And Diana like she needs to use like her passive a little bit more, but like that's not gonna happen because Rice is just gonna not let her get close to even the creeps. Yeah. Because she can't do anything without coming up. Yeah. yeah. Nightmare Whoops seems to be on the lead right yeah, now. Playing the pretty good properly. There's the back. Yep. Um, oh, they're both backing. So not my favorite time to back because, as we as we all know, you want to back with the with the cannon wave. Yes. Cannon wave is the best time to back. But you know, sometimes it can be okay, and I think they're fine here because the other guy's not pushing, so they're both on the same on the same grounds. Um, and we're gonna see what happens soon. I mean, here I don't know what rise was like. Not honestly, with rise you would want to go with tier of the goddess. It's a Mana items. Yeah, it's your catalog. But for a one v one, is that the best choice? Based on what was happening, I the only tier he had was mana. Health wise, he was doing fine. Right. So yeah, I'd say like tier, but like getting two mana items, maybe a little bit too much, just because like you're not gonna have the time to scale, up, right? You're yeah. not gonna have the time to like max out on your tier, max out on your broad of ages. So maybe going a little bit easier on the mana, maybe a good choice. I think we're approaching the. Oh, that Ooh, was there. It. it is a harass. There we go. No worries, man. Diana's Lots still level five. Has no counter. Uh, nothing he can do. No yeah. Play. No counterplay. <laughs> <literally. laughs> they're right, right level six. Level they're, six. they're both level six. Oh, I, I think the rice is gonna take yeah, it. Yeah. Diana cannot do it. First. Hey. It first game going over the rise. GG boy. GG nightmare whoops. That was pretty good. Again, as said before. The rise. Oh, look! Interestingly enough, he was only maxing E, just pushing this match. Yeah, he's connected. Pass push wave. That's all he has. Our summoner has disconnected. Who has no wave clear? Awesome stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yep. So that there puts Quilly into losers bracket. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. I guess we never really said that. Yeah. There's gonna be a losers bracket. So if you undo too hot in your first game, you still got another chance. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mostly a thing to enjoy. Uh, I don't know who the next game is. Yep. We'll see from our head honcho from yeah. across the sea. Also, um, can you give me one second? I'll be back. Talk about something cool. All right. Um, what can we talk about today? Oh, I guess I'll talk about what I've been currently playing is some Pokemon Go. I know it's a dead game, but I still enjoy it because uh, Niantic tried to do some Chicago event today, but they did a poor job of doing that. But luckily for attendees, they got some compensation back by extending the event for two days and a hundred free coins. Oh, a hundred dollars worth of coins in the game. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think Carlos went to go assist them on how to do some, I guess, layout of the stream. That way we can see items and creep kills and stuff like that. Because that was some information that would have been helpful for us to know as the game does revolve around 100 minion kills and items will help us understand what they're going for but yeah we will see he's just talking talking um what else uh, splatoon 2 came out i don't know if anyone plays that but it's a fun game so far for me prettier than the first one story wise mm, i'm not that far into it i use but yeah <laughs> 
I was just uh, trying to figure out the spectator UI just yeah. to make sure we can get the items, like the the creep score. Yeah, I explained that. that uh, that's an important aspect to know. No, I mean they they knew. We're just trying <laughs> to figure out the, the yeah. hotkey because we forgot. So, um, yeah. So I think our next game is going to start soon. Seeing this rice peak was pretty interesting. It was something I did not expect at all. Yeah, I didn't expect rice. It kind of fell out of meta, but I guess in a one v one. I mean, all right. It's it's a one v one, and like. As we've said, like I've said this before in like multiple tournaments, it's like we are in no way informed pro players. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one here uh, is like a pro player in League of Legends, and what that brings in is like sometimes comfort picks are better just for this. Like you can even see it in pro play when like maybe one player is they can pick like a certain character because they're really good at it, and the character's not bad. It's just like it's not the best for the occasion, but like you being a one trick actually helps you like be comfortable in that. And whatnot. We've seen that before. Like my biggest example is like Quas playing Ilaoi like back in the day when he was on Energy, mm -hmm. um, when Energy was doing okay <laughs> before they got relegated. <laughs> but uh, cool. be before that, uh, Quas actually played Ilaoi, and he was the only player that would actually play that character mm -hmm. because he was really comfortable with it and whatnot. And there's usually certain players that have like. Their pocket picks, they're like, are not made up, but are there. And I'm explaining to you more of this here, because the lower you go, like, I think the better is to stay on something you're comfortable with, know what's made up. Although, if <laughs> I think it's some of the picks, oh, that'd be interesting. I see, I see. Um, but again, as I'm saying, like, just play something you're comfortable with. It's a little bit better than just trying to go for the meta, or play something you know you can perform in I guess instead of playing something that gives you like a better chance to win if you're really good at but you've never played you know yeah like I'm not gonna pick Caitlyn cause I don't know I mean I, I do play Caitlyn but <laughs> you did the last 1v1 yeah I did yeah you picked Caitlyn <laughs> yeah okay I did um but I'm like I don't know I I, I could pick Mordekaiser actually that'd be pretty interesting I'm just gonna push it's not bad yeah so that's all I'm gonna do like I actually if I knew who the other player is picking, I would, because I would just pick like runes and masteries. Like, give me all the armor so I don't die. <laughs> give me all you the armor so attack. I don't die, and then I just push the wave and win. Yeah. And I mean, I can do the cheesy strat where I go for the rates, not to, not to kill them, but to heal myself. Yeah. That, that, that's that's a, that's a tip. That's a pro pro Mordekaiser tip. <laughs> pro tip for Mordekaiser. <laughs> pro tip for Mordekaiser. If you're mid lane and you're low on health, go press W on the raids and you heal to like 30% of your health and then you just go back. Cuz walk away. Yeah, cuz like um your heal doesn't like it scales down with like minions, but it doesn't scale down with monsters. So you can just go and heal a lot and then just go back cuz it's really dumb. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, good the stuff. The more you know, you guys. <laughs> it's good stuff. Go out and play Mordekaiser and tell him Carlos told you to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my friend L. George, <laughs> he's always mad because, like, I don't know how you play this character and you do damage. And yeah. Like, you know, and you don't. You just, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you just survive everything. <laughs> you, you don't. You just, I mean, you do that. Like, it's very matchup dependent, what you can do, which kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Which is when you start seeing, like, a character, like, when a character is really dependent on the matchup you're against, and like it's really dependent on your team comp and the other team comp, that's when you start seeing like the, the characters kind of fall out of flavor. Like some characters can succeed, which is what like coming back to like the oh pick what you're comfortable with. It also happens like on even bigger teams. Like let's say I want to pick Mordecai, right? Like you know like you gotta pick a team that's actually gonna have like CC heavy and whatnot, and they have like it's a bunch of like you know things that move around. You're not gonna do anything. Yeah. It's like it's like a thing. But there's like a lot of like things like that. Like specific picks I think are like more specific on like team comp than anything else. Yeah, exactly. Uh we'll see they're uh, loading in, so they're loading in. We should be starting very soon. Time and then we will be in game. So yeah, sadly there's a three minute spectator wait. Um again, as I'm saying I hope at some point Riot creates like, especially for like custom games, if you create a custom game and you invite an spectator, they should be able to watch the game without delay. Yeah. But it's still there, mostly, I don't know why. But 
you know, like, I understand having it for, like, any normal game where, like, oh, I'm going to go and watch my friend play, but my other friends on their team, so I can help them out, so, like, you get, like, the trimmer delay to, like, stop that. But on custom games, is it really needed? Nah, Especially when you're invited, when you're, like, dragged into the lobby and, like, hey, this guy's going to be expectating. He should have no delay. Yeah. Three that minutes is a very yeah. unnecessary aspect of it. Yeah, but whatever. We're here. All right, so we have Salvation Black and Dante use Ignite in this game. Dante use Ignite, I've seen him before in some other tournaments and whatnot. I'm pretty sure I've like played with him a little bit at least. So I know I've seen the guy before. Yeah, I, I do not recognize any of those two names. I recognize the name for Dante use Ignite. The other one I don't. Yeah, I all surprised to me. I we'll saw see how they play. I saw Dante use Ignite before, like he was playing a little bit before. Playing Master Yi. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. I play Master Yi too. <laughs> I play all the bad characters. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> fun playing with you. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Master Yi again, team comp dependent on both teams. Yeah. <laughs> so again, to our viewers, we mentioned it before, but follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, everything, you know. Click that follow button on Twitch. It's pretty useful. It's pretty cool. It helps us out a lot with uh, helps our sponsors. you out a lot. It gives you notifications of when we go live or any other content we put. All right, on. so we're starting, and we see a Timo and oh a boy, Lucian. Timo, oh and Lucian, Lucian knows what's up. He's mm. going exhaust ignite, so he has the all-in potential right Lucian now. Lucian is a great pick for one v ones. Not gonna lie. Yeah, but if Timo reads in the all-in. There's the blind, and that's it. Indeed. Indeed there is. I mean, the blind is really powerful, but at the same time, like, getting hit by the Lucian Q, W. w come on, not the W. W it's, it's a scales off AP, come on. It's a little bit of damage. It's a little bit. It's like 70. Yeah. Level 1. No. It's, it's something. It's something, but, you know, <laughs> people can do a lot more in that. <laughs> Well, but like, if he's blind and can't do anything else, might as well throw it out, right? Yeah, well, you might as well run away instead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we will see, we'll see. He started off with Q. Timo most likely. Starting off with Q? Yep. Nothing. Oh, nothing yet. Yeah. He's Timo's just waiting to see what happens. And do you see that word? That word is there for a reason. It is he a knew. Shout out to Timo. He knew the cheese was coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. So just wait it out until minions come in. I'm expecting to see a very fast fight here. Yeah. I don't know who's going to win it, though. It's going to be interesting. Team on side to start on E. I don't know if going on the jungle is yeah, valid. Yeah, I don't... I mean, he's not going to amount to much. Yeah, so it comes does out. doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I, th I think, like, grabbing stuff from the jungle is when, when yeah. it gets bad, but, like, all right, let's see. The game begins with the farm fest. Mmm, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, Doran Shield Star. Mmm. He's in there for the long run. Yeah. Yeah, I think if he wanted to go for a kill, he would have definitely started like a long sword. Yeah, exactly. Which I don't know. I think the long sword or even a Doran, like, just any sort of offensive weapon would. Uh, would it have done better for him since he is running the ignite exhaust? He wants the damage instead of a shield to give him resist. Yeah, but I, I, he was expecting more harass probably a little bit, like here for example. Ooh, Ooh the Thunder, Thunder Lord. Lord. Ooh. Got him. Again, what I'm saying like um, maybe maybe hmm. the Dornish. Timo used both pots already. But oh I think I think oh. it's fine. I think Timo knows what he's doing. Yeah, I expect the flash ignite Q auto to kill him yeah, off if he's here. running Thunder Lord. Well, no, no, he's running, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, Fervor of Battle. Oh, really? I saw, I saw oh. him have two stacks up, so yeah, he's running Fervor of Battle. All right, so if we had Thunderlord, it would have been a different story, but since he's not, I uh, expect him not to go all in then. Hmm. Oh, that, uh, that damage, though. Hmm. Yeah. It was great. He if he. In. Ooh. Ooh. That was and even Timo better. He has no pot, so he has to stay in lane or back right now. We'll see what happens soon. All in right now, I'm pretty sure, with Ignite and Exhaust. Oh, definitely. The blind, Ooh. auto. Here we go. The all in. Boom, boom. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Timo. Well, there you go, you know, Timo. He tried. 
Yep, the blind, you're used to skewing that. Kind of so, Dante, you ignite, goes past the first, yep, the first round, first round is done, that is. So, the two games down. Two games down. From what I heard, we're gonna have a bye, and I was, <laughs> I was a lucky winner. <laughs> yeah, so we have an odd number of people, and we have seven Charles people total. Through. Yep. We got seven people total. And, um, so, the next match, oh, I think that's. You. Yeah, I was like, wait, so I didn't do the math right. I will be playing against You will be playing someone. I think I know who you're playing against. Ah, we will see. Oh, I get I'm to not, find out. I'm not going to say anything, but good luck. Yep. Uh, So, since Brian's going to be leaving us very, very soon. Yeah, I expect uh, Carlos number two to step in. Uh, so, you should probably be leaving in. now. Yeah. I'll and go the other Carlos, Carlos will be coming in to replace him. Yes. And this will be the last match for our first round. Uh, we're going to run another round of winners, I'm going to assume, hopefully. And then we're going to losers bracket. And after that thing, that would like we can just run through all of losers after that, except for losers final, which will happen after winners final. That too. So, as again, I said before, this last match is going to be between... Brian, PBJs, and the last player I'm going to assume is um, this person that showed up a little bit was asking when we were going to start. Uh, I think they're the the actual high school student that are is one of them that are here for summer classes, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool that we can include everyone here as well. Alumni, faculty, everyone, everyone's invited to play. Yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome, so we'll be starting very, very soon. Again, sorry about the three minute delay, but we'll see what they pick. I'm not sure what Brian's gonna pick. He usually picks Jin. He plays Jin, Ivern, and Vard. Yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, we'll be seeing what he plays. Uh, it's hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, if Jared can give me a update, I don't think so. He's not. Are they on the lobby already? Do you know? All right, cool, awesome. That's, that's okay. Don't worry about it. All right, um, so we'll be starting soon. They'll probably set up the match pretty fast. They're so should be cool. Again, last match for winners. Uh, for winners, sorry. For yeah, winners bracket. Last match for the first round. Uh, we have Nightmare Wolves and Dante UC Knight as our winners. We have a buy, which is me, and then whoever wins this, this will go into basically winners' quarterfinals already. And it's a pretty short tournament, so it'll be two matches after this one, and then after that we should go into losers bracket, which everyone gets a second chance to get back to to be the very best. Um, the way that works is when you lose a match, you go into well, basically another tournament with everyone that loses every single round. And at the end, whoever wins this loser's bracket gets a chance to go against the person that hasn't won. But to actually win the tournament, they have to beat them twice in a row since the first um, person still hasn't lost a match. You know, like everyone gets two chances. So even if you won everything, you still get two chances there. You can. So I think the other Carlos is gone or something. So uh, I guess I'm solo for now. <laughs> um, cool. So the match is being set up already. It should be starting pretty soon. And I don't know what else to say. There's three minutes of wait here. So cool. Um, again, I don't know what they're going to pick. Should be fun to watch be an interesting match um i actually want to see someone go for the strat the strat and not kill the other guy but to actually try to win by tower or by creeps i, I think those are always pretty cool um we'll see what happens i am very interested to see what happens really there <coughs> yeah michael get in here no, I'm, I'm trying to see if I'm going to get someone else or not, so, yeah.
Hello. Hello, Michael. How's it going? We're going to have to move the camera again? Yeah, <laughs> we got to move the camera. Oh, but look at that. Look at the transition. Beautiful. Oh, wow. It's wonderful. Yeah. Very bright up here, I see. Yeah, it is. It's very... All right, yeah. So today we have... I don't know how to say her name. Uh, I guess it's Sex... <laughs> ZX Turn. Yeah. CX Turn. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Definitely what it is. Yeah. I am much shorter than you I see on the it's camera. It's it's okay. It's not it's not really that big of a difference, like half yeah. a head. Just gotta sit up straight, I guess. Yeah. There oh you well. Go. I don't really play League of Legends. Actually, I just set up these tournaments. Yeah, don't worry. I don't play video games either. I just come here to hang out. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. why you were in there playing League of Legends earlier. Ch uh, totally, yeah. yeah. No, that wasn't me. No. So we're in the lobby now, so so three minutes to start. You can know again we have to wait it out a little bit. I already saw a pick here, so someone picked Katarina. I don't know who that was. Oh, you can see it. I can see from this I screen, okay. but you can only see. Uh, so you can only see since it's a blind pick, because if you do draft, you do not get like a blind pick at the end. Mm -hmm. Like you actually like. Blue team picks first, and then red team picks after. So oh. one player will know which other one plays. So we don't want we don't want to do that. So we just switch to blind, whatever. Okay. And I can see blue teams because I guess like the spectator client is on the blue team, so we can see blue teams picks. We cannot see red teams pick. Gotcha. Wish we could show you the picks actually right now, but uh, it's just one pick. difficulty. It's it's just one pick. It doesn't matter actually. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's like it's nothing. Like usually when you're playing like a 5v5, you actually want to see because you want to see how like they're thinking out like, oh, the whole like team is like, how is it going to be composed, etc, etc. Because there's usually like a lot of thought into that. When you're playing just a 1v1, it's just one character. I don't and you don't know who the other player is going to pick. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, I hope to see an exciting game here. Anyway. Oh, definitely. Me too. I think the last one was pretty interesting. It was... I, I think PBJs is going to is gonna lose. Yeah. Um. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> I hope so too. I don't know if you saw, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, I think Z Extern is mm -hmm. actually one of the high school. Yes. Yeah. yeah like actually, many of the students here today are from the high oh school really? art experience. Yes. Yeah. I thought I thought it was like only her because the other people like Dante using Ignite, I've seen him before mm -hmm. in other tournaments. Not well. He might have been. You can be in high school with and yeah. still go to tournaments. Yeah. Like I'm like oh, so he's not in before here. Huh. I see oh. how it is. Because like I've seen him before for sure here. Like. Like a tournament, I'm like, hmm. Mm. So I don't really know. Well, I mean, look at all the professionals. A lot of them still have oh. to be in high school. Oh yeah, no. Well, I mean, most of the professionals for league actually like. I think in North America they have to be like at least. Well, in Europe I know it's like you have to be 17. If you're like okay. younger, you cannot compete. Like they don't let yeah. you. Um, but a lot of them like my favorite player is Frog, and he's like this guy from. He's Danish, and he's been playing for ages. He's, he's Danish. Yeah, he's from or Europe. Danish. You don't know? You don't I don't know. know. I don't know. He's from Denmark. Okay. He's from Denmark. <laughs> uh, so the guy used to play in Europe. But then my friend was talking. He's like, oh, yeah, but like he's not a good. Like, he moved to North America. He got like into a team and whatnot. And it's like, but he's like, he's old now. Like, like I checked. He's 21. He's been playing since he was like 16. I'm like, wow, dang. That could have been me back in the day, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty good at games in high school. Yeah, me too. And then life happened. Me too. You know, responsibilities. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Mm, definitely. But in no way or form I want to be like a pro gamer anymore. No. But it's still cool to check it out. It's pretty cool. No, I kind of like this part of the... Oh, yeah, definitely. Me scene. too. It's pretty cool. It's cool stuff. Behind the scenes. That, that That's where I tend to fit in now. I just watch people play. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like the, back, like the backstage stuff. It's always pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Like the whole production, the whole like setting up like tournaments, et cetera, et cetera. It's always been pretty fun. Yeah, it's fun. Time consuming. Definitely. Stressful. Yeah. But always fun. Now imagine instead of having eight people, we had 120 people in the tournament, not just showing up. Mm. No, thank you. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not, yeah, yet. not yet. We will be there soon. Yes, but we need a more, a bigger staff to do such a thing. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Like we would need like more tournament organizers, like mm. TOs. We would need like you know, cause yeah, like definitely. we need to run multiple games at the same time, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's PBJs ready to roll. Oh, and there's us and PBJs. Ooh. That's that's new. It's fancy. Mm. So why it's purple? It it it's purple because they took a photo of it in the other room. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because it's our new logo and um, I like it. Yeah. Well, yes, it is not the correct colors, but yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it'll I it'll work for now. I get you. It's on yeah. the Facebook and stuff. You can see it there. Yeah. Yeah. It's of course right up there in Twitch. Yeah. 
Give us a like, a thumbs up, you know. Follow I'll us on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter. I'll make sure to give them some, uh, some actual Some actual ones? Now. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, coming together. A little slow, yeah. but hey, it's getting there. So the game should start pretty soon, I'm assuming. Yes. Assuming, and you know, it's going pretty fast. Again, this is the last round for the first round. Like, the last match for the first round. I should grab my phone and see if anybody's chatting to us. We should encourage that, actually. Yeah, we should. Let me check. You're gonna be checking Twitch, see if there's chat. No one's chatting to us. No one, no one, no one cares to hey. chat. Oh, it's still connecting. Oh, okay. Well, the game started already. Let's see, Katarina versus Vladimir. Do you know what any of these characters do? I have no idea. I do not play League. All right, cool. Tell me that. Cool. So, Katarina on the left side, uh, she is an assassin. She throws around daggers and stuff like that. She's really mobile. So the point of her is that whenever she kills another character, she resets her cooldowns. And she can do more damage. She does a lot of them. Uh, the thing about her is that, so her first ability, she throws a dagger and it bounces around. It drops a dagger on the ground. Hmm. And her E, well, her E is her last ability. She can use it to jump to other enemies or to the daggers. To if nice. she jumps to a dagger, though, it resets the cooldown. Like it lowers the cooldown by a lot, so she can jump jump around a lot. She has lots of dark, la uh, lots of daggers. Gotcha. So the point is, her Q and her W both drop daggers. The W just drops a dagger on top of her. Oh, okay. Like after like a second or so, it drops down. And then she can jump around to them and basically like things you Q to someone because like it throws a dagger on top of them. Yeah. And you press W to drop a dagger. So it takes like a little bit of time to like drop down. Mm. Then you Me E to them spawned. and then you can E back. Because uh, when you pick a dagger, it does a lot of damage. Okay. So that's like the whole point. Nice. Her ultimate, she starts spinning and does a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty good because it does a lot of AOE damage. But here it's not that useful because I'm going to go into like Vladimir. Vladimir's like a, n a not a vampire. Nah. So nah. that's the name. That's that's the whole point. Okay. Um, so he's he basically his his passive. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. His passive makes it so the more HP he has, the more damage he deals. He deals. Okay. And, and the more ability power he has, mm -hmm. the more HP he has. Okay. The point is, like, he heals a lot. His Q heals him. His ultimate heals him a lot. But he okay. has an ability called, like, a Sanguine Pool, where he goes underground and becomes invulnerable to damage, to anything, right? Okay. So the point here is that if Katarina jumps in, he can just press that ability, and she blows everything, because she doesn't really have control over, like, when to deal the damage, apart from the Q and the mm -hmm. E. So he can just go down on the ground, and like the R is not going to do anything. If she picks up a dagger, it's not going to do anything. So he can do a lot of stuff like that to avoid damage. Okay. And what he mostly does, like his Q is just point and click, he heals. If you see his resource bar, basically this bar just fills up one, two, and that's it. Yeah. So when he gets full, his next Q mm -hmm. hits for a lot of damage and heals him like a lot more. But, um,. If you don't use it for a couple of seconds, it just disappears. And every time you use a Q, you get like another stat. Okay. So he just needs to use it twice, and then the third time it hits really hard. So there you can see how she dropped oh. down, dealt does a lot of damage, and just got, got yeah, it out. Yeah, definitely. That's nice. But she has to be careful, because Vladimir can just heal up and heal up and heal up. So maybe this fight will be a little bit more drowned out than the other one. But we'll see. I think they're done already. As you see, their cameras have disappeared. Yes. <laughs> I know that. So who do you think actually is going to win this one? Like I actually think Baby Jays has like the higher adventure just from like the champion itself. Okay. Because while Katarina, yeah, she can do like a lot of damage and stuff. She doesn't really have anything to keep her up there. And with the spells that Baby Jays brought, which are exhaust and ignite. So every character in this game, when you go into a match, you get two spells to choose from. On normal games, you take flash because yeah. it's just like a little small blink with like a five minute cooldown. So that's why Z Extern has. And she also has Ignite, which you pop in someone and they get reduced healing and you deal damage to them. Okay. But PBJs on the other hand is like, you know what, I don't need Flash here. Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to fight, like, you know, might as well go all in, right? So he also has Ignite to do that damage. 
but he has exhaust, which lowers the damage another character does for a couple of seconds. Gotcha. So he can avoid the damage, and she if she hasn't dropped anything down, he can just exhaust her. And she's okay. not going to do anything. So hmm. we'll see. We'll see what happens. He just ah, did. Yeah. So, the so the dagger drops down there, and if she presses E on top of it, she jumps to it, does an AOE that like attack, and then her E cooldown, which is like a blink, just towards a place, an enemy usually, gets reset for like a couple of seconds. Gotcha. So actually, it is not too late to join. Uh, if you are here, uh, it'll make it a lot easier for us. Yeah, if someone still wants to join, I think it's still possible. Yeah, I think actually, as long as they go to the school here, whether you're the art uh, experience student or a student mm -hmm. alumni. You can still show up, you just gotta show up here. Which yeah. is 707, 180 New Montgomery, San Francisco, California, in the Academy of Fire University building. And the rules are first to 100 creeps, or first... First tower or first blood. Yeah, that's right. Uh, or first blood, yes. But yeah, I mean, if you're in the area, get in just come on down and fill out that other spot that we have open and there's that, that one spot, spot is actually against you yeah as i was saying i got a buy so far <laughs> and technically my match is next probably did did someone oh, no they no back. they just went back oh they went back to buy um and that's why we select this map because usually in 1v1s like there's most people would play it on the Howling of this map, which yes. is the just a single lane. Yeah, that's what we usually put it but on. But at the same time, that map has a lot of like restrictions, which don't make it perfect for 1v1s. Number one, you start level three. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can abuse like, oh, you know, I only have one ability or so. You cannot yeah. abuse those like few levels. Okay. You start out with more gold and you cannot go back. Mm -hmm. And that whole you cannot go back thing, like, like really it makes some characters way better than other ones. Okay, so th this way gives people a little more of a chance to actually... It gives more variety than what you can pick. Because if you weren't able to go back, Vladimir would be super good because like, he just heals up. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you hit him, I just heal up. And Katarina can't really do that. Okay. So here, like, they're both level... S well, uh, Vladimir's level 6 now. Yeah, it looks like nobody has one yet. Yeah. Yeah, so I think they're going to go for like first 100 creeps. Okay. I think PBJ has it right now because he's at 41. Okay. While Katarina is only at 13. 13. So the thing here at level six is like Katarina can deal a lot of damage because like her like AOE ultimate is really good, but Vladimir, what his ultimate does is it drops down a pool that whoever gets hit by it for the next I think four seconds, they get increased damage received from anything. Okay. And after it pops, it deals a bunch of damage, and Vladimir actually recovers for like 100% of that damage. So there you can see it. Oh, I see. And you, he just gets like a bunch of health back. So she didn't die, but, but now her flash is down. Even though PBJs use both exhaust and ignite, she's gonna be low and she's gonna be losing even more farm to the tower. Yeah. And like little by little, that will make you lose. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean he's almost at 50 creeps. So yeah. No, he is. He's yeah. Now. Yeah. So every wave comes with six, except for the cannon waves, which come every three. Every three waves you get a cannon wave, which comes with um, seven creeps because you get the cannon. Okay. So that's usually like a way to like check it out. Mm -hmm. So for example, right here was uh, six creeps, right? Yeah. Then the next one's gonna be six again, and then the next one is gonna be seven, because it comes with a cannon again. Okay. When the game has stalled for like over 20 minutes or so, every wave comes with a cannon, just to end the game faster. Gotcha. Because cannon creeps receive less damage from towers, and they hit them really hard. Uh. So it helps you push a lot. Right here, for example, she jumps there, does some damage, and then she can just like jump again, just pulls uh. out and like doesn't do any damage. Gotcha. He just gets out. This is a really tough matchup for Katarina, not gonna lie. Because Katarina especially like she thrives better in like a team environment where she can jump in and like if she can get a reset from like her E resets when she grabs daggers, right? But her all her cooldowns resets if she kills someone. So if someone's low in like a team fight and comes in she can clear out everyone. Okay. So as soon as she gets a kill, she can probably get another one. Yeah, and definitely. So and so on. Yeah. So so the damage it, it just keeps going up the more oh no no she like so like all her abilities are cooldowns are reset oh okay so she can Q again and that puts another dagger she can jump to gotcha and like she her W comes back up so she can put another dagger and so on okay so she can put more daggers which she can jump to that's that's the main thing so that one like had like a cannon but like the cannon was already really low so yeah it doesn't really matter 
Also, cannons give more gold, so good to know. Now she wants to back because she's kind of low. She doesn't want to get all in. Yeah. Um, BBJ's ultimate almost comes back up, which is. not I don't think anyone's gonna get a kill here. I think they're just gonna end with creeps. Gotcha. I think BBJ's gonna take it. The biggest disadvantage that Katarina has here is she's also melee range, so like she cannot really like farm from far away gotcha. unless she uses her Q. Blimey, he can just auto attack. He can Q away. He can, like his E like slows him down for a little bit, but like it consumes health. But then it explodes, deals AOE damage that can be blocked, so you kind of want to position yourself inside the wave. And if he charges up, it slows as well. It does a lot of damage, so it's, it's really good stuff. So how much does level affect? Level affects a lot, in all honesty. So, like, as you can see, they're both the same level. But no, like no, she's level 7, he's level 8. No, they're both level 8 now. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was checking on the UI. Close enough. Oh, I see. I am yeah. I'm blind. It's okay. Yeah. So level does affect a lot in that you get like maybe like 80 or so HP, which especially in the early levels is a lot. But like even on the like 80, 80 HP is something. Mm -hmm. Depends on the character, you get a certain amount of um, of uh, attack damage, which affects your auto attacks. Yeah. You do not get uh, ability power. Uh, you do not get ability power per level. That's just something you get from items and from other means. Okay. You get some armor. Every character gets a little bit of magic resist per level, very, very little. Uh, but the thing is, like Vladimir, as I said before, well, actually, I think it's only bonus health. He gets he gets damage the more HP he has. So I think it's only from bonus, so it's only from items. Okay. But I'm I'm not 100% sure on that one. But so I don't think he gets like damage per levels. It's just like a thing. Like unless you're like attack damage reliant, you do not get damage per level. Uh, but you get tank there for level. Okay. Which is really good. Yeah. You also get attack speed per level. Wow. Yeah, we know that. Uh, we just want to know who. And I'm going to assume it was won by creeps. Okay. Speedy Jays was almost at 70. Mm. And you get six whips from every 30 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to assume it was him. I would assume so too. Uh, yeah, PBJs might be coming back here in just a few minutes. Or maybe we'll get, or maybe talks. we'll get some secret commentators. Oh, oh, I see. Maybe we do. <laughs> I'm a little bit obvious, huh? <laughs> I think. Okay. I think so. So we'll see who wins we in a second. We should mark it once because I totally didn't do that. Uh, so yeah, pass me. Do you have a pen? I can mark it. I remember nope. them. I remember. All right, cool. Remember. That's good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. That's yeah. good enough. I wish we could kind of see that scoreboard. Right? Oh yeah. Um, maybe we could we make that uh, commentator camera go away. That'd be great. Yeah. Maybe if Steve, if he hears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't know we're talking to him. Can camera, you take score. out the camera? Yeah, we'd like to see the score. It, the score is right where the camera is. <laughs> Great you. stuff. Oh, there we go. So two more ah, creeps, and the game is basically over. Um, she should jump in right. She now should jump in right now and go for it. Like yeah. that's that's what she needs to do. Oh, oh, she didn't know. She forgot about uh, that. It's over. Well, game is over. Oh well. PBJ's won. Good job, PBJ's. Good job, PBJ's. I, you did I it. applaud you. You did it. You you made the game last the longest. Great stuff. You made Carlos talk forever because I do not know anything about this game still. So even with your explanation. Yeah. So right now I think we're gonna get two new commentators, two right. new fighter oh. joined ring. Um, yeah. Are they? Are they? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So should we switch it to Our them right now? Disconnected. Yeah, we'll switch to them right now. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to uh, Art UE Sports on Twitch. My name's Steven. Oh yeah, our new commentator here is uh, Steven. He, uh, first time, let's see how he does. Uh, but we're getting our next game ready with uh, Bolby or Carlos, as you guys know him, uh, into the, the next game. So we'll see what he does. If he does pull out the Mordecai that he was talking about. Looks like a Galio instant lock. Instant lock Galio, huh? All right, we'll see what he will be up against. Galio, uh, all right pick. We'll see. It depends on who he plays. Yeah. If he goes for the tankier. Nasus. That's oh, Nasus. I want to see if he's a legendary AP Nasus. I, I, I highly doubt it. it. But I, I'd actually say that, <laughs> that he might actually do that. Yeah, Nasus is, uh, like, his biggest weakness is kind of just early game in ganked. general. Yeah. Cause, like, his focus, like, he, it's so easy to land. He just walk up, hit it, and then walk away. Definitely. That's all you need to do is AP Nasus. Yeah, just press your E button, and yeah, you kind of win. Yeah, press E, walk away, and you're done. Yeah, but if he's going to be playing AP Nasus, <laughs> or even AD Nasus, into, like, this Galio matchup, Galio just builds MR. Yeah. And then it's just 9 times out of 10, Galio's just going to... Yeah, Galio will just out-tank it, and no one will die. No one will die. Resident Sleeper. Yep, indeed. So we'll see what we pick. He's been uh, swapping between Nasus and what it seems like... Yorick. Yorick. Yorick would actually be a great pick against that. Ah, uh, but the lock him into Nasus. Yeah, this is going to be a very control-based game. Yep, we'll see if it's AP or straight-up tank. Uh, I say if he goes AP, farming would be very, very easy. Because you just have to land your E onto yeah. wave, and you only need level 3 E yeah. to kill it. If Galio's good enough, if Galio knows what he's doing, then he could very easily punish with like Q, W, get a lot of easy damage racked up. Yeah, I just go in and fight him. Yeah, if I had to say this is like 90... 90, maybe even 100%, just a skill matchup. Yeah, it's just, if it depends on what their objectives are. If it's skill or farm or parrot, we will see. Definitely. So while we wait into load screens, we'll just say that loser's bracket will be after winner's bracket, just to speed the process up. And we will see how Bulby does in his first actual game, instead of a buy-in. Exactly. Yeah. We will see. We will see. Gotta love that three minute delay. Yeah, three minute delay. Yeah, we've been talking about a lot of it, like how Lee client does not have support, like LAN tournaments and stuff. Yeah. It still provides the three minute delays on spectators. LAN tournaments, you even have to get approved by a riot. Yeah, you need. You have to go through a whole lot of processing, paperwork, and stuff forms. just to get approval from riot. Definitely. It's a tedious task, indeed. No fun for anyone. Yeah. It's like playing cat against Vladimir. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's not fun for anyone. No fun for everyone. <laughs> no one had fun that game. Trust me. Resident Sleep is in the chat, boys. Yep, indeed. Just, wow. Just farm farm simulator. There was a couple moments where cat could have easily killed you. Yeah, there was moments, and then... Well, not easily. She could have She could have done it. Yeah, there came a point where I actually hit half health, and I was like, oh, man. Stuff is happening. And then... Back and then to farming. back to farming. Yep, back to farm. A lot of amateur mistakes by Katarina. <laughs> not checking CS. Selling item. That was a big one. Oh, did she? Oh, man. She sold the Doran's Blade for oh. like a long sword and pots. And, I'm ju and I was just watching. And I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, was, I saw her build and I was like, this is... She's trying to sustain with me, but Kat does not She do can't well. do well in that yeah. matchup. She had to go in. Yeah, she she had to build damage and kill me. That's the only way she would have won. Yeah. Because if she tried to play the sustain game, it w just never would have win. Because Vlad just has built-in sustain and had a Doran shield as well to yeah. go on top of that. Definitely. And I was building Spirit Visage already because I was like, it gives me stats and everything I need for this exactly. matchup. Once the second you would have finished that Spirit Visage, game would have been game, set, match. Yeah, it was just, uh, I can build whatever and be A-OK. -okay. Yeah. Props to both players. Uh, good job, Katarina. Good job, you. Yeah. It was Scum of the earth. Yeah, it was... <laughs> come on. Uh, it was a good strategy. Yeah, it's like, I'll just play Vlad, I guess, and sustain. Safe pick. Strong yeah, pick. Yeah, it was like, uh, it's Vlad does well if people don't know what to do against it. Yeah. Because you just, if you don't do it against him, he'll just sustain. And just <sighs> Q, Q. Q, Q, Q. Just sustain off people. Oh, it looks like we're getting into loading phase. Yeah, we are into the loading screen, and we will be playing the game very shortly with... They are playing the game right now. Ah, oh yeah, the three-minute delay. Gotta love it. So, 
we get to see into the future how hardcore concentration they are going into the try hard all right in game guys let's see what we got so we have the galio and massive <coughs> Flash right. exhaust, flash ignite. Oh boy. Exhaust is a very questionable choice. Yeah, I think... Maybe he was expecting an AD matchup. Probably. <coughs> In this matchup, I don't see it doing too much for him. Ignite for Galio though, that is a very strong Yeah, pick. that is... If he gets That's everything. gonna negate almost all of Nasus. Yeah. Oh, Trying to go for the early ooh, poke. Ooh, there we go, here we go. Dodge the first skill shot. Nasus, with that new information, knows how to play against him now, because yeah. he knows that he has Q up. Q, oh, here we did go. A, did a banter. The best part, the DM dance. Great. Both are melee, so you can't really do anything. Gotta love DM. I'm permabanned for four accounts. Oh, look, he's gonna get the first DS of the game. That's actually... 10 gold to him. I highly doubt, uh, no, <laughs> I lied. I. Uh, very certain that this will come to a CS, so that extra bit of gold, Minions extra bit of CS fallen. might actually tip it over to Nessus's favor, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. So, yep, I believe it's AP Nessus who started with the E. Yes, yep, he Dorn. does have the yep. Dorns. He will be going for Minion Wave Flare, level 3. He will do that for you. If he went flat AP and stuff like that. Magic Pen. Yeah. The worst. Like, oof. Galio is walking into the minion wave. Uh, there you go, take the minion. Oh, oh Galio is gonna quite fine. Gonna get a lot of the poke. He's gonna be pushing wave. It's gonna be an easy game for Nasus. So that's all he has to do. Galio doing well with CS so far. Yep, they are three for three right now. Corrupting potion for Galio and Nasus with the level two actually. Yeah, getting. That extra Taking advantage. Extra bit of ward XP. Yeah, the ward XP paid off. Really can't do anything with level two Nasus other than like wither someone. Maybe you could press Q button every couple seconds. Yep. But Galio will be staying in the E, taking extra damage from the minion. So we'll see. Nasus is playing this very well, despite being in a very yeah. bad matchup. So shout out to that. Yeah, he's playing around his E, which is the best part. Avoiding skill shots and everything, he's playing very well. Excellent sidesteps there. Yeah. Takes and ignores everything, and Galio just takes the harass. That's all he can do. I have a feeling that's is that perfect CS right now. 14 or what? Yeah, who? Shout out to that follower. New follower hype. There we go. Bayonetta approves. <laughs> Alright, so Nasus, I think he's doing very well right now. Oh, going for the taunt, knock up Q. Oh, ooh, there you go. Half Good chunk of damage. Yep. Gotta love that percent health, Storm Raiders. Love no, it. Not Storm Raiders, Thunder Lords. Thunder Lords, indeed. So, uh, Galio out of Corrupting Potion charges, and Nasus still has his one potion on deck. If I had to guess, Galio's gonna go back probably after the next wave. Most or maybe he's gonna try and expend all his mana. Yeah, I believe like he's gonna milk out his mana pool and health pool until he has to be sent back. Nasus with a very considerable lead in CS. Yeah. He has the built in like his passive for health re uh mm. regaining health and just the Dorn sheet ring for the mana and it's all working out well for him. This might actually be perfect CS. Yeah, it's thirty f he's doing yeah, he's fifteen excellent CS ahead. Excellent play by Nasus. Yep. He knows that he just has to farm it out, and this is how he'll win this matchup. Slow time. But he still can get the kill since he is landing all the harass he needs. Exactly. Galio is taking a lot of extra damage yeah. from minions, a lot of extra dots over time because yeah. of the edge of that E. Indeed. Being efficient with the E Nasus harass. misses one, finally. He is not a farming robot. Nope. Con can confirm he is not botting. So both take the time to recall here. Let's see what they purchase. Here we go. Uh, blasting, blasting rod, rod. and we have a ruby crystal. Mm, interesting. If I had to guess, he's going to try and build into the Spectre's Cowl. Just try and get a bit of extra health sustain. Yeah. Or maybe even haunting guys, just for the magic pen. Yep, yep. 
We'll see, because he's currently behind in CS, so he will be taking more damage because of the blasting mod. So we'll, we'll see if we can work around his um, dodging of the E ability. Because Nasus now, can, as you can see, wave clear on point now. He just has to hit the E on as many minions as he can and it's cleared. Nasus is doing, he's sending those minions straight into tower. Yep. Getting extra tower damage, denying CS. Yeah, it's fair game for Nasus. 40 CS to 24. How do you think this match is going to pan out? I, I think Nasus is just going to farm it out. That's all he does. He, he, he waits for the minions all to stop at the proper place and just hits the E and he's in. Absolutely correct. He's timing those E's very well. Yep, and then... Spirit Fire is honestly a very scary ability if you don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, it, it's short range, but if you let it hit you, it will hurt way more than you think it will. Galio is actually at an ability disadvantage because Galio does not have an ultimate in a 1v1. Ah, that's very true. Oh, oh. Bit of a little lag right there. Oh, but Nas is taking a hit right there down to half health. But some, yeah, his passive can do work for that. Very true. Especially yeah. if he's running the extra healing mastery. Indeed. Galio's getting very greedy. Yeah, Galio's going to harass. This. All fair and game, so I believe this is going to end up with who has the most CS, which it seems Nasus will. I don't see Galio ever really getting a kill by himself right now. If I had to say that, if, I, if this were to come down to a kill, I'd have to bet it on Nasus being able to outstay Galio. Yeah. And Galio just getting a bit too greedy with it. Yeah, I, it's Galio has yet to land one of his dashes onto Nasus, so that's what the most concerning for me. Definitely. Like, without boots, he still manages to dodge his ability. He's reading these abilities. Very yeah, he well. sees the wind up and knows exactly where he's landing. Because I believe Galio is just landing to see where he is placed rather than uh, where he was. Oh, Galio. Going there we very go. Oh, here we go. Pops the ultimate just for the health and AoE damage. Should be fine just walks away. That was a great ultimate fate yeah. for Galio. You're going to try to stop the basing. Nasus is out of mana. He's got to go back. Yep. Ooh, Galio is going to have to go back. Took all that harass as well. Let's clear those CS. Yes. Yeah. Good job, Galio. Right. So yeah, here Looks like go. Nasus Haunting is going to be building into a Rylize. Oh, Rylize. Oh, interesting. With the refill pod as well. A catalyst from Galio. Roa. Good choice. Yep. We'll With see. the boots to help him walk out of that spirit fire faster. Yeah, able to dodge it out and hopefully not take the rats. Good choice. I'm surprised a Rylars from Nasus. I was expecting something that did uh, a little more AP damage than something that slowed. Cause I think the extra, a I think the extra slow will actually help him a lot because extra AP against Galio isn't going to do very much. I agree with you, but the the, the way the, this game is panning out, he is he only needs 30 CS to win. So Very true. All he needs to do is wave clear, and that's all. He'll win the game. Because Galio seems to... He just can't... He's not farming as well, so his plan should be to kill Nasus, but Catalyst won't help you that much in that scenario. Catalyst, at best, is going to give you some extra mana to get those very strong Qs down. Yeah. So Galio's... Galio going in. Right, let's see if we can Big get damage. Yeah. Nasus uses Spirit Fire yep. on the minions. He gets the wave push and now he just walks away. Nasus three fourths of the way there. Galio yep. just behind halfway. Galio is desperately trying to go for yep, a kill. Right Galio now. is trying to get the kill. He knows he's behind CS. He has to make a play. Because it's just a ticking time bomb at this point. Yeah, Nasus just walks in, gets the farm, walks away. All Takes a bit of poke, do. doesn't matter. Oh, here we Life go. Steal it back. Let's see what happens. Oh, this might be it. Ignite coming down from Galio. Yep. Nasus just walks away from walks the weather. Away. He has the health bonus and resist he gets from the ult and just walks away. He has no fear. No fear, Dominator. Oh, Flash E. Ooh, I don't know about this play. He got withered. Exhaust. That's oh, gonna be it. Oh no. It's gonna be it. Yep, there it is. Minions sealing the deal for Nasus. Minions OP. There it is. Excellent play I'm coming in from Nasus. Yep, he won out the game. Gally got a little greedy and cost him the game. Very Our summoner has yep. disconnected. GG Bulby wins.
Yes. All right. So Dante won. Dante. Oh, it seems oh. I am up to play. Best of luck, man. Indeed. I will catch you <laughs> again. Thank you. All right. Oh, we're still on air. All right. We got a ban out of Amiibo here. Hey. Hey, what's up? What was your name again? Michael. Michael. Yeah. That was a very, very greedy play. It was. Um, the CS count would <coughs> have was like 80 CS, and I thought. Learn from I, history. Yeah. I better like do something now, or I'm never gonna get anything out of very it. Very true. That was a very risky play. It was. Galio did flash the E. Yeah. If, he did. if you landed the E, possibly could have weaved in an extra empowered auto attack in there. Yeah, that's true. Possibly could have gotten the kill. I was I, I was noticing that I was doing a lot of damage to him, you know, with my just regular combo. I mean, you know, his ultimate gives him that extra health, so it was kind of just annoying to see that happen. But, yeah, I greeted it at the very end, so. How was the... Why the Galio pick? The Galio, well, you know, he's like a... For me, he's a 1v1 champ, obviously. Like, his level 3 spike's pretty insane. Keeping that with his W, you know, getting that extra protection. His Q is E. It's pretty nice. But um, I wasn't expecting the na the AP Nasus. AP Nasus. Is AP a Nasus very is strange pick. Yeah, AP Nasus is pretty tough. He clears wave quicker than I do. And I'm, like, I can't go in or I get complete creep aggro. And that's exactly. too much damage. If you weren't going an aggressive champion like Pantheon or mm -hmm. Talon, you, there was almost no way you could have competed with him. That's but he did very well. Yeah, I did. Very well, indeed. Yeah, I was not keeping track of CS. Like, my, I had tunnel vision throughout that whole game. I was thinking, I have to, like, first blood him. But Small no. mistake. <laughs> Looks like people are getting into the game right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're hearing that, you know, the stage is going on. Who's the next one? I think it was... Uh, PB and J and... Brian. Brian. Right? Yeah. Whoever PB and J is. That's true. So we're, um, both of us are in our loser bra brackets now. Very true. Yeah. I think we're going to be up sometime soon, probably after the next two matches, maybe. Very true. Yeah. How do you think this bracket's going to turn out, Bayonetta? <laughs> excellent, excellent feedback. Excellent. Uh, this is this is this is interesting now. Um, I'm I'm seeing the weird picks, you know, like um, last game. Well, the game before this was the Katarina and Vladimir. Yes. Yeah, it was um it was a tough it was a tough game to see, kind of. I'm seeing a lot of control char characters, mm -hmm. a lot of just farm, mm -hmm. lots of stain. Yeah. And then Dante, and admittedly I, mm -hmm. going very aggressive champions. Yeah, very Teemo, aggressive. Lucian, trying to weave in those extra damage points. It was. Just it going for those first bloods. Yeah, that was nice to see. I, it, I feel like um, most of these people are trying to go for first bloods, but like as we saw with um, Brian and... Um, Zixter? Yeah, both were both going for CS, so it was nice to see that, you know? Very true. I just want to see how this match turns out, you know? The, um, what they pick and whatnot. Looks like a Yasuo hover. Yasuo hover. Ooh, that's interesting. That's a if I had to guess, that's coming out from Dante. Dante is very well known for choosing very aggressive champions. Mm. I can see the reflection in his glasses. <laughs> I can peer into his soul. Yeah. I'm hoping for a really intense match right now, honestly. As much as I love seeing 1v1s, getting that 100 creep score is resident sleeper. Very. Resident very sleeper. Nobody wants to see that. Nah. We're here to see who gets that first blood, you know? First blood, Lucian v Teemo. Exhaust is a very uh, annoying spell. Yeah, that, that exhaust. When I when I did tower dive him and I saw that exhaust pop up, I'm like... You do. I did not want to take that extra tower shot because I, I thought I would have enough health just to survive creeps. But with the tower shot from ex with exhaust, no, I was not going to survive. I even tried popping my W to block minion damage, but it, it wasn't enough. Definitely. It's, it's a very tough matchup against Nasus, especially when he has a W that slows you for... We were actually putting bets on you, honestly, Yeah. because we could see the AP Nasus coming out, mm -hmm. and we were considering that, oh, he's probably just going to farm all game. Galio's got his passive, passive anti-bulwark shield. He's got W to help prevent against the spirit fires yeah. if you see his channeling up. Uh, I, I don't know if you saw, but like every time I did go in, I chunked him pretty heavily. and I You did very massive damage. Yeah. That's very... Yeah, and then I started getting very distinctive about Galio, despite being a tank. He yeah. could do very considerable amounts of damage. I was actually Galio's. tempted to like build um, magic resistance against him, mostly because you know he was building AP. But yeah, but that wouldn't have gone anywhere. No, no. You I were too like too behind in CS. Too behind in CS, and I I did enough damage, but I felt like if I could have do more, I could have just first blooded him right there and then. Looks like locks are coming in. We're just gonna have to wait for that to come in. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> the 
So, can't wait to see how this game's going to turn out. Yeah. Hopefully we can see a lot more aggressive plays, a lot more tower dives, a lot more <laughs> very risky 1v1s. Very, very risky. If I'm waiting, the I'm hover from Yasuo, if the hover for Yasuo showed up, that would be really nice to see. Yasuo would be a very interesting matchup very. to see. Unless they're going someone like, you know, hmm. Mundo, Ramus. Very fun characters. If this Intuitive person is, if, um, who did you say was hovering over Yasuo? Dante. Dante. If Dante knows how to play Yasuo very well, he can easily get the, um, a level two spike and probably first blood. Very true. I have trust in Dante's. Yeah, Dante. Offensive capability. Yeah, Dante is actually really good. He actually knows what he's doing from, from what I've seen from your matchup. Yeah. He's very, he, he knows how to, w he knows how to play. Yeah. Best I can put it. He knows what he's doing. Oh boy. Looks like we got that three minute delay. That three minute delay is really nice. We're going to keep bringing that up every time <laughs> we go into Champion Select. No, but I'm, I'm really hoping for something a lot more, um, ca like, more capable from Dante. Like, it seems like from your matchup, both of you were going high and aggressive, and Dante's very an, a very aggressive player, but when I see from Brian, he just seems to farm it out and wants to see if he can get to 100 CS before anything else. So Very true. If I had to guess, either Brian's going to choose something very passive, very control-based, mm -hmm. like in the last couple of games we've seen, or he's going to try and mix it up with someone very aggressive. Yeah. Maybe he could even go for some mid-ground, like with someone like Nunu, Mundo. I want to see what he, I want to see what Brian does against Dante, because Dante seems to be a very aggressive player. With his Lucian play that he had done on you, he was going pretty hard with his Thunderlord's Mastery, getting that nice burst um, with Lucian. So I want to see how this goes out against there. a passive and an aggressive player. Yeah. This is actually the first time we'll be seeing... A, pa a passive and aggressive champion. That's true. If he picks Vladimir again against um, what we thought Dante picked was a yeah, Yasuo, because well. he might resort back to if he picked Nasus, he was gonna stay farm with his EU as AP. Nasus Vladimir. possibly could have outstayed Yasuo. W does wonders. Mm -hmm. he, he is very strong against. Yeah. What I I just want to see how this works out, honestly. Maybe. Maybe. If um, Dante's an aggressive player like I think he is, he might tower dive or he might do something pretty risky in order to get the first blood. I don't think Dante will tower dive, knowing the type of champions that he's picking. He will, yeah, he'll play. He'll probably be doing using some sort of self buff mechanic to possibly mm -hmm. negate damage. If I think if Dante was watching these matches, he'll probably learn from Brian's past games that he's a very passive player and he has to like work around that of some sort. Exactly. So, Bayonetta statue. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about the new Amiibos? The final Amiibos for Smash, July 21st. Im immediate shortage. Immediate shortage? Immediate shortage. Oh, boy. This three-minute delay. Oh, I think it's starting, actually. There we go. This game is starting. Jin, oh, and, Jin and Syndra. Syndra, like I said. All right, Jin is running an Dante. Ignite and Barrier. Dante is running Barrier and Ignite. This is interesting. Syndra taking Q level 1. Mm. Obviously, you can only take that ability because... There's nothing much else you can do. Unless you want to do a nice little splat with your E. It does literally nothing. Okay, and seeing that <coughs> um, Syndra has taken Exhaust and Ignite. Looks like Dante is going to be playing a bit more passively with the Doran Shield. That's true. I would have gone for the Doran's Blade because Syndra, I highly doubt, is going to be doing much damage with her auto attacks. Right. <coughs> that ward. Syndra, sorry for the cough. Syndra trying to get some pokes down. That's true. She has like a very low cooldown on her Q, so... If she can land anything, that'd be good for her. Real question is, how long could she keep it up? That's true. What what's, what's really annoying about Sindra is that she's got a very short cooldown, and her man like it, her Q costs basically no mana. So that's just uh, it's very hard to land, though. Yeah. But seeing knowing Dante is probably just gonna stay away from the poke as he is now hiding in the tower. Looks like Dante got Q level one. Very. That's very expected choice. start for Jin. Yeah. I'd have to say the Syndra's in a very big disadvantage Most on the early game because yeah. until level 9, she will not have a passive. None whatsoever. Syndra's passive being that when you max a skill, you will gain bonus effects on it. Mm. And the earliest you can max a skill is at level 9. So, minions coming in. We're going to see how this plays out. Dante's um, keeping his ground away from her. Brian's Doesn't playing really aggressive right now. Ward expired. Yep. Dante. He's very dodging passively. them. He's dodging the Qs very nicely. Hellspring. That's a very nice Q coming out from Dante. Nope. Finally got hit by one. Dante is not auto botting. Seems like he got Warlord's Bloodlust instead of Fervor. That's fine. Not even Deathfire. Yeah, Deathfire would have been really nice, but Deathfire I think he's expected. trying to keep sustain. I don't Ooh. think Warlord's gives 
gives him a life steal anymore. It gives it empowered auto attack. Oh. Yeah. But Dante's playing aggressive just now. Shooting that minion straight in the face, hitting that level two. Oh. Sinjin's with a W, misses it. Nice walk. Dante farming it up very well. Keeping the farm very nice. The ammo system might be a very. Brian's slight. actually uh, switched from his passive play to very aggressive, apparently. He's ignoring minions and he's actually just trying to hit Dante. Ooh, Ooh. that's very nice play coming the out. The thing from is Brian. that what, what I'm seeing right now is that Brian may be getting a lot of poke in, but he's wasting a lot of mana right now and he might have to resort to a quick back or. Quick back may cost him a couple CS. That's true. Maybe a wave and a half. Oh, that's very Brian nice. Knew, Brian knew he was going to go for that cannon creep. Getting the Thunderlord's proc off. Yeah, this is where Brian actually can't do anything anymore. He's just completely out of mana. He's Unless out of mana, and I don't think he should be pushed up this um, far without it. Jin getting the very Ooh, nice. Nice poke. That's one. Creep aggro stuck on him. That's two. Oh. Looks like they're going in. Done. Oh, barrier. Barrier coming barrier out. Exhaust. Ignite. Oh, the fourth quick shot from Jin is. Completely destroyed Sinta. Whisper in your ear. Let me take that first blood. Excellent play coming out from Dante. Like Dante. I said, very aggressive, very mechanically skilled ca player. Very nice. It was odd to see that um, Syndra went in so quickly without any mana whatsoever and thought she could rely on it. It was a very risky play. Yeah. Very risky. Relying Maybe she relied on the ignite the exhaust. The ignite exhaust. I thought um, she would probably try to do that, but with only. She's not an auto attack champion, obviously, and so she had to rely on one Q. But with Jin, with Barrier and Ignite, he could just probably... Especially with that passive. Mm -hmm. Underestimating that passive damage is an easy way to get just melted by the Jin. Pretty Execution much. damage, it guaranteed crit, move speed, game over. Yeah, pretty much. It, w it was odd to see that Brian changed his um, play style very much from the last game to very an aggressive center from a very passive... You if know. I had to guess what was going through his mind, he, uh, he probably knew that Dante was going to go someone aggressive, so That's he true. had to go someone to counteract it. Looks like Dante is playing a lot of 80 carries. Yeah. So, shout out to anyone in the winner's bracket who wants to play him. <laughs> Choose an 80... All right. Obi and Dante. It looks Obi like this is winner's finals. All right. Looks like it's singles and I don't get to play anymore. <laughs> yeah, so we just found out who were the players, Dante and... Dante and Bulby. Dante and Bulby will be re um, entering the finals rounds of winners. Dante's... Dante is not 99. disappointed. Yeah. Dante is 99% going to stick with an 80 carry. Bulby, well, who did he play again? He Bulby, played. I think he... I was against him. Yeah, I was against him as when he was playing Nasus, so... Yeah, he was the con a secondary control. That's true. But it's nice. I want to see how this works out, though. Yeah, it this seems could like be a um, very aggressive. Yeah, Dante's playing a lot of AD characters. I want to see if he could play Quinn. 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 Quinn would be a very great 1v1 champion. Especially with that passive. The passive is very Passive with Thunderlords. That could be very, very devastating. Yeah. Chunks you immediately. Especially with the lethality buffs. Goes mm. back, gets a straight of Dirk. Headhunter passive, that's going to be like easy 300 damage. That's true. Or like level 3. If um, Dante's smart enough, he'll see if he can get as much CS as possible and make a quick back and get a serrated Dirk and probably lose one wave of CS and see if he can get the first blood when he gets back. Very true. He'll probably be running so he'll probably be running the same masteries and... Not masteries. Summer spells, barrier, and ignite. That's very nice. <coughs> so, Bulby, we... Uh, what we know about him, very controlled player, very, very. Con very, very controlled, knows what he's doing as well. I am very excited to see how this is going to match up. Another control versus aggressive, but okay. if I had to guess, Bulby will be pulling out an aggressive champion. Because mm -hmm. uh, I guess I don't think, I think he's, from what he's seen, if he's seen um, what's been going on, Dante cannot, cannot go passive. He's a very aggressive player, and I think Bulby will actually have to go aggressive as well. This may be a quick 1v1 in the first five minutes of the game, most likely. Very just like last game. I would be very su I'm very surprised that I haven't seen any super aggressive ch champions like Pantheon or Pantheon, Talon, Master Yi. Talon is responsible for 25% of first bloods. 50% actually. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised I've, I haven't seen any of those quick champions that instant kills people like that. Very true. Oh, oh it's gonna so be we best just got of three. Uh, yeah, we got information. It's a best of 3 rounds. This will be interesting. If I had to guess, these matches will either play out very the same, come, g going to come down to like the last auto attack, mm -hmm. last cooldowns. If it's a best out of three, I think um, 
they can afford to lose the first one to see like what the other player is most likely gonna like not play again, but what their style is gonna be passive, aggressive, or straight CS. These players better be watching these matches because we're learning a lot from these. We are, as we can see, we've turned the camera to Bulby. Bulby. Smug look on his face. Very smug. Look at him. Looks like he's mulling over his picks. That's our boy. And there's Dante. Keeping the straightest face I've ever seen. Maybe they're in game already. Probably are. Seems like he's waiting. Smile coming out. We'll see how this plays out. Maybe he's gonna go for the TMO pick. I want to see something very aggressive. He seems like he likes his AD. Oh, Yasuo hovers. The Yasuo hovers. Very interesting. I'd really like to see a Yasuo player to, like in this 3v3. That's It's enough time to probably... Melee versus ranged is not it's as one-sided as people think. Mm -hmm. If you're playing as Yasuo, you can actually turn that fight really quickly. Easily. Hovering the vein. If I had to guess, that's going to be Dante locking in the vein. Mm -hmm. The vein hover is actually really nice. Vayne early game is very questionable though, especially in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of things to condemn. We'll have to see what, well, this was Dante's pick, correct? Very. Okay, so, correct. Bulby might have to play, well, since he doesn't know. I think he's still gonna stick to um, melee. That's the Yasuo lock in, not gonna stick to his 80s carries. Oh, okay, that's very, wow. Death is like the wind. And I Always think Bulby locked in Chogath. We'll be able to see in about three minutes. There we go. Spectator delay. If that is Looking a Chogath right. versus Yasuo, it, that's going to be very tough for Yasuo. Very true. If, Lots of if Cho'Gath can silences. Yes. If Chogath can predict where his E is going to land, he can obviously knock him up and probably get W and auto, probably lock in Thunderlords and then walk away for free. Very, very true. And I think Yasuo needs to kill Chogath before he hits level 6. If I had to guess, Yasuo is going to go in level 2, mm -hmm. guns blazing, exhaust ignite, knock-ups everywhere. If Chogath gets to level 6, Yasuo might lose from all the protections from Chogath's ultimate he gets from meeting minions or anything. Maybe. But Chogath, like, yeah. But Chogaf, unlike Yasuo, is very weak in the early game. Mm -hmm. Both so are weak. Only one has a level 2 spike, which is Yasuo. Yasuo's got the range. She's <laughs> got the windshield. Windshield is going to be... Windshield is going to be a very... Very nice thing to keep the silence away from him and any auto attacks from Chogaf. Correct. Windwall is going to be a near useless ability, considering that Chogaf does not have any actual projectiles. Mm -hmm. Them being AO. All he has to do is just pretty much block that silence. If he can block the silence, he can come up and, you know... Phone calls. Yeah. Lots of phone calls. Unlike yeah, so unlike Chogaf, I can't just scream at my phone and put it on silence. <laughs> Wish I could do that. Samsung 8. It seems like Coming to a store they have started the game, but the three minute delay has cursed us. Three minute delay. So how do you think this game this first game's gonna play out? I feel like it it'll be not one sided, but if um if it goes pretty well for Chogath, I think he might last until level six and see if, like I think that's his goal Very right true. now stat like stay till level six get farm eat minions you know grow bigger get more protections from his ultimate he might actually like be tankier than Yasuo to the point where he does enough damage and has sustain against him. If I had him. to guess Cho'Gath will be rushing a Thormail source. Mm -hmm. Thormails, Randuins. I hope he, I hope he does though, because then that means Yasuo has to play very carefully around him. He won't have to even play carefully. He could just Cho'Gath can just walk up, mm -hmm. take some damage. What's Yasuo gonna do about it? That's true. If that does happen, Yasuo is just gonna have to rely on getting CS or first turret. Yeah, exactly. This is a really tough game actually for a Yasuo. Both, both players actually. Yeah. If Yasuo Chogath can get the level 2 spike, Cho'Gath can very much lose the early game. If Cho'Gath pushes up a bit too far, Yasuo just dashes in. He c could possibly be a very easy first blood. Mm -hmm. Unless he runs uh, protections against them, you know? Very true. Could be running full armor masteries. I'd, armor like to see, I'd really like to see this match, honestly. This is this is a very exciting match to see. Someone who... I am very excited. Yeah. The Yasuo who can er easily 1v2, 1v1 you once he hits a level 2 spike, and a Cho'Gath who is a mid late game champion. I doubt it'll get that far, but if Yasuo lets it get that far, then it's either 100 CS or Cho'Gath hits level six and might win. Definitely. Well, we'll have to wait for about three minutes. Sh timer should be counting down. Looks like it's getting into the game right now as we speak. That'd be nice. That'd be very nice. Did you see, did you by happen to chance see any of the summoning spells that they have? Summoning spells, no, but will we be able to see that in about 15 to 5 seconds? Nice. I think Cho'Gath probably has to run Exhaust or Barrier. Cho'Gath will have to run Exhaust. 
Yeah, if so I had to guess, Cho'Gaff's might be running both Exhaust and Ignite. All right, the game has started. Exhaust Flash on the side of Cho'Gaff and Dante. With Ignite, Ignite and Barrier. Ignite Barrier. Interesting. Switching it up with the Doran's Blade instead of the Doran's Shield this time. Cho'Gaff mulling over his options, not making any buys. Doran's Shield, safe choice. Mm -hmm. Cloth Armor, Cloth 5 would have been a very nice pick as well. Looks like oh. he's got that level 5 mastery. As a Nightbringer like Yasuo. Looks like somebody likes knocking people up in lane. Seems like Cho'Gath has not leveled up an ability yet. That's a ward coming down. Yasuo's got that level 1 Q. Very safe ability. <laughs> Very friendly mid lane right now. Cho'Gath can't really do much about it. Cho'Gath no. puts a point in Q. Yasuo could easily sidestep. W, what's I that think gonna he's going to end w? up deciding after what he sees Yasuo use first. Ooh, the oh. stutter step. Canceling those auto attacks. Oh, auto canceling. <coughs> Interesting. Playing footsies with each other. Dante could have very well been... Looks like Cho'Gath got W first. W. Interesting. Interesting. Pick. Very interesting indeed. Looks like minions are spawning, coming into the lane as we speak. Actually, they came into we'll the lane see about how three this minutes goes. ago. Looks like they're they're off. Oh, Yasuo getting the early Q poke. Cho'Gath is going a little bit too close to the wave. Cho'Gath oh, taking too much damage, dodges the tornado. Yasuo with the fervor of battle. Cho'Gath with the What's really nice Dante. about Cho'Gath is he has his own sustain. Every time he kills a minion, he gains a certain amount of health and mana, correct? Correct. That's really nice of him that he can just sustain in lane like that. Especially with Doran Shield. Oh! Nice sidestep. It's a very nice sidestep from Cho'Gath. Taking more Q poke from Yasuo. Getting the silence when the barrier is down. Level 2 spike from... Looks uh, like Cho'Gath's got Grass of the Undying. That's going to help his sustain abilities even more. Oh. Getting hit by the knockup. Not going to do much, though. Especially when he has a oh yeah, here it is E level two oh Cho'Gath Cho'Gath is doing a damage. lot of damage. He's gonna have to si he's gonna have to walk away. Yasuo cannot play aggressive like this anymore with the Cho'Gath. That Cho'Gath has scary does have very scary AP scaling 100. percent It's like he's Cho'Gath is running a lot of healing. Doran's shield healing from um, a certain amount of time. He's passive and of course grasp of the undying. If Cho'Gath plays this right, he could easily secure a first blood. Getting, Getting hit by off. knock up silence. Cho'Gaf is running very low on mana though. Getting very the Vorpal Spikes level 2. Level 3? Level 3, he has upgraded Vorpal Spikes instead of his Q. Oh, here's something that's popping up. Yasuo's going in with his E. Exhaust coming out. Dante's going to have to walk away. Grasp of the Undying is proc. Seems like nothing much happened there. A summoner was used. Lots of footsies. Yep. Oh, looks like Dante's going to go for it. Guess he's not. Nope. Ignite could've possibly could have sealed the deal. True. Looks like Cho'Gaff's going to be going back. Gonna yep. Yeah, so farm up just a little bit. That's a fine trade. Except um, if he lets this go on for any longer, Yasuo will just have to sit here and get CS. Cho'Gaff, cloth oh. armor pots, and a trinket, which nice. he apparently forgot, I think. No, actually, in the new patch, if you walk a certain point away from spawn, you, it actually buys a trinket for you. Oh, nice. Yes, so people don't have to waste as much time. Yasuo buying another Doran's Ring and refillable potions. Very nice. Those Doran's Blades are going to easily help him sustain in lane a lot better. A lot better from this Cho'Gath. This Cho'Gath is actually doing a lot more damage than I expected. Not a lot of crit, though. Not a lot, actually. Making one half of Yasuo's passive nearly useless. But if I had to guess after this, he's probably going to build into Zeal. Possibly a Phantom Dancer. But I'm not sure if the game's going to last long enough. Let's Looks see like what he got. Yasuo. Dodging the silence. It was a very nice trade. Knockup coming up. Tossing it out. I think with um, Cho'Gath, with his trade, it's actually very well for him since Cho'Gath can just heal back most of the damage that's done to him. Plus with Grasp of the Undying in his passive. Cho'Gath is taking a lot of extra minion damage though. He's got a cannon this minion on him. Ooh. Cho'Gath canceling an auto attack. Questionable. Vorpal Spikes. Vorpal Spikes doing a lot of damage to Yasuo. Vorpal Spikes, very underestimated ability. Very Under much. Underrated as well. Looks like Yasuo isn't going to be putting any points into his W. Wise choice. Wind, wind shield coming up. 
back down. Let's see. Look at those webcams. Looks like someone lost. Or we'll someone. find out in about three minutes. We'll see what's going on right here. See, like I, like I said before, with um with, with Cho'Gath running, he's just healing a lot. But as well, like the only problem that he's having right now is just keeping his mana up. Cho'Gath putting a point into his Q, missing it. Cho'Gath. Oh, the Cho'Gath. Autos. Yasuo is taking the a autos. lot of damage. Grass of the Undying coming in. Yasuo being Yasuo, just going to be Vopal able to dash Strikes out those is minions. a very insane like auto attack enhancement for him. I think Dante might have been able to win that win that if he had re um. Shut up, staying in lane. Yes. I think he's just gonna push it in so that Yasuo loses CS. Let's take a look at that CS lead. Looks like Yasuo's got a definite lead. Mhm. Mm Based Thanks. on the webcams, I highly doubt this came down to a CS though. What I I I actually thought that Yasuo could have won that matchup against um Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath was um but like half health, right? Or correct or lower than that? Yeah, they were both running on fumes. Yeah. I think Rambled if um if he went in and he had his berry if he used berry and ignite he probably could have won because Cho'Gath still had cooldown um his exhaust on cooldown. Vorpal spikes is very powerful though. Mhm. Mm Ooh, Cho'Gath um. Cho'Gath, like we said, pulling out the bramble vest. Yasuo with the boots. Yes. Possibly to avoid those pesky little void craters. Doesn't want to get knocked up. Refillable potion for the sustain. Chogath is just going to have to rely on the Bramble Vest when he goes in for 1v1s against Yasuo. No potions. That's going to be a bit scary. What's really nice is that Vorpal Strikes, uh, Vorpal Strikes actually Vorpal procs Spike. off. It actually sp um, knocks Pro off um, Yasuo's shield, and he can stay a safe distance from him. Looks like Chogath is actually toggling them on and off. He's going aggressive. Chogath did hit level 6, and Grasp of the Undying doing tons of damage. If I had to guess, Chogath is going to hold on to this ultimate as long as possible. Yeah. As much as I, as much as he wants to, you know, eat a minion, I think he wants to get Yasuo as close as to low health, and then exactly. Maybe this matchup will come down to a like flash, flash ultimate. Most likely. Dante taking lots of damage. Having to rely on his pots. Potion. Cho'Gath actually does not need any more pots at this late, at this late of the game. Relying on Dorans and his passive. Exhaust coming back up for Cho'Gath. That's going to make those 1v1s a lot more breathable for him. Let's see how this goes out. Cho'Gath is actually a level ahead. Ooh, oh, hit by going Yasuo in. is going in for the ultimate. Looks like he's just going to be playing footsies. Going to go in just oh. for the ultimate. Misses he's both abilities. This might be game. Might be. Oh, the exhaust comes out. Knock up. Barrier, Barrier. coming up. That's going to be it. Excellent play by Dante. Hiding behind the minions. Weaving in and out. Very nice job. Very smart decisions. Very smart. I think what Cho'Gath was um, aiming for his um, knock up at the minions is he, he was thinking that Yasuo would probably E through and come from behind, but it seems like he misjudged that play. Whiffing those abilities cost him that game. Very much. I'm surprised that he didn't flash away from that. He could have actually just backed away safely. Mm, I'd hi I highly doubt he had the freedom to do so. Maybe he was just running so high on adrenaline. Pretty just much. Thought, just in those, in those little small chance. moments, it's do or die. Looks like they've already hopped into... Second match, so the first win goes to Dante. One out of three so one far. Looks like it's 1-0 right now. I'm really surprised. Dante is not disappointed with the very aggressive plays. I really thought Cho'Gath was going to win just judging from the burst that was happening from those little trades. Cho'Gath's, Cho'Gath's too slow of a character. Pretty much. Too many cast times. Yes. Yeah, so it's way too mobile. Way Can't too mobile. Going it. through minions, going through him. Way too mobile. Just like Bayonetta. <laughs> pre-purchase at your local GameStop today. It's it, it, it's very interesting to see something like, I, I really thought that Cho'Gath would have enough for his ultimate or go through it, but I think he was saving it because um, Yasuo's shield, um, his passive shield came back up and I don't think he wanted to waste so much um, of his ult damage on his shield. Yeah. If I had to guess, <coughs> maybe he ra if I had to guess, he possibly ran out of mana when it came to whipping those two abilities. That's true. The whiff in both of those of just missing both of his abilities, his W and his Q were very bad. If missing the Q was bad enough. Missing that W, fatal. Fatal. Both of them. If he had landed both of them, that probably would have. That would have sealed it. That would have been his game. I, or at least <coughs> forcing both summoners from Dante and him walking away. Barrier proving again for Dante to be a very w very strong nice to skill. see that. So no exhausting knights. Wish I'd see that against me against Timo. 
it's it's so nice it's so nice to see that someone is um like Dante is running something like Barry. He like is not overestim or underestimating his enemies. Looks like champions have been locked in. We'll be able to figure those out in about three minutes. Yes. It's it's nice to know that Dante's like trying to hold on his own with the barrier. I really like seeing that from him though. Most because like he's just trying to make he's no he knows that the late game damage or mid is gonna do a lot to him, especially in those one v ones. And the barrier seems to be helping him out when he's at exactly ten very, very safe insurance policy against those surprisingly bursty characters such as Jin, mm -hmm. Jin, it's not, it's not Jin, Syndra. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot of other people have been picking things like exhaust and um, ignite, thinking that would d seal the deal. But having Flash that barrier. Is Flash is surprisingly the suspect mm -hmm. of all these wasted summoner spells. Nobody's been using Flash. Not I yet. actually have, but um, as you can see from my last game, I didn't do very Flash well. Is very, so far. Flash is very risky in these 1v1s. Not, mu true. not a lot you can do with it. Not a lot of kill pressure. Best you could do is maybe weave an auto attack or dodge an ability. Yeah. So you can see Dante probably in game right now. Look at those mouse. Look at that mouse. He knows what he's doing. The rolling up of his sleeves. He's very serious right now. I got those sleeves rolled up. You got them rolled down. You ain't serious. I'm not serious. It's esports, dude. Esports. Oh, keep it serious. Nah, I'm not serious. Nah. If I was in game, I'd be rolling up my sleeves. Very true. I'd take my jacket off, which <laughs> I did. It was interesting though, seeing. I want to see what Dante picks now. Like he had stopped from picking ranged ads to picking Yasuel. Which did help him out, but I, I want to see what he picks next, though. An I aggressive 1v1-er or something like Yasuo again? I'm, I want... This may be a very long shot, but I am considering Dante to be choosing Kane in this matchup. Kane? Kane would be an interesting... Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't think he's very capable of 1v1s, though. He His early game damage is very strong, though. It is, but um, I, I think that if he can hold on until his like form changes, I think, from the... If he can hold... If you can hold on until form changes, then it may as well be game. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be... What do you think he would pick, though? Assassin or... Most likely assass Assassin if he feels like he can easily get the mm -hmm. first blood. But if I had to guess, Darkin's <laughs> always the safest choice. That's Spell true. vamp, obviously over damage. And Shadow Assassin having very low magic damage. Mm -hmm. Very surprising, actually. Why couldn't they just give it like a free Thunderlords or something? That's true. If he does pick Kane, that would be... It'd be hard to um, watch in a sense that Kane does have a short cooldown in his Q, but at the same time, I think that's his only escape besides his <coughs> walking through walls. Walking through walls could actually be very mm -hmm. helpful. Healing Getting himself. Walking through walls doesn't make you invulnerable, though. Mm -hmm. Just get a ranged character, just shoot him out of the wall. That's true. The heal could be very... Very nice for him. He just walks back into turret, walks through the... Just where keeps Raptors walking back and forth, walking yeah. back and forth. I'm surprised I haven't seen a Mordekaiser yet. That's true. Mordekaisers would be great to see right now, but... Mordekaiser in 1v1s. Mm -hmm. Almost as good as Pantheon. Pantheon. Um, what I'm really hoping to see is Talon, Pantheon, or Quinn. Those three champions are very, very, very tough aggressive. to fight. Spe like Quinn basically has a Thunderlord's proc on herself. Looks like that timer is up. We are in loading phase. We are in the game. Yorick versus Katarina. Interesting. <coughs> Dante picking... Katarina going with the same summoners, Ignite and Barrier. Looks like Bullaby choosing a more control aggressive bit of a midpoint. It's good to have Flash on um, anything against Katarina. If Katar if the enemy Katarina knows how to play, Flash is very useful to get out of most of her burst damage. Very true. Katarina going for Dark Seal and Refillable Potions. Yorick, Doran Shield, and a Health Pot. Doran Shield. I honestly would not be choosing Doran Shield. Oh, the refunds. Doran Shield. Doran Shield and bots. Looks both like they're both going to be playing it very safe. Doran Shield is actually a very smart buy for Katarina because A, Yorick is melee. It's going to help block the helicopter Yorick. Helicopter Yorick. As you can see, Yorick's very devastating. Very much so. I don't, like Katarina needs to be able to kill him very early before Yorick has enough minions. When to you've got a shovel just flying around like that, <laughs> there's almost nothing you could do. It's Earth Hacker him all over again. I'm getting nightmares. Those nightmares are returning. I can hear oh. that spin. Level six, level five, level six. That's level six. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's level six mastery. Regardless, Bullaby knows how to play this character, or at least he thinks he knows. 
We think we think he does. This is going to be very interesting to see what Katarina can do against Yorick. Bullaby still spinning that shovel. Minions are spawning, and now let's see what happens Minions here. Minions entering the lane, and this is going to mark the start of it of round two. Didn't really. Of course, expect Katarina much. can't much can't do much against this lane right now. But I beg to differ. She could do a lot. She could get a lot of early game poke. Until she hits that level 2 spike. I don't think she's able to be afford to walk up towards him with a Q. No, Yorick's, Yorick's level 1 is insanely weak. Best he has is like an auto attack enhancer. It's like fighting Vast level 1. He should not be that close against ranged Yorick minions. and taking way, way too, too much. much. Yeah, that damage. was a mistake. Thunder Lord's coming out. Yorick half. Taking that much damage early from Katarina should not be a good thing. Katarina level two weight. power spike. This is a really bad position for Katarina, and if her Qs will land too close to tower, and she might take um, a tower shot. Looks like Dante's betting. Not betting. Looks like Dante's playing very aggressively, trying to force Bullaby back. This is actually a really bad spot for Katarina. She can't like poke or do much in this situation. Looks like York's gonna be bringing out the ghouls. Taking too much damage from creeps. Gonna vomit all over Katarina. Get those ghouls. One more grave. A bit Bullaby's aggressive. Those Respect. ghouls are actually going to be a bit detrimental to Bullaby because even though they will help him get some damage, those do count towards CS. They do. Looks like we're completely even in CS now. Nothing to worry about yet. Keeping a very nice lead, both of them. <coughs> I think Bullaby's uh, underestimating minions. Bullaby's going in. Oh. Dante, Sean pulling out. Not much you can do about that. Not much. With, ca with champion like Katarina, virtually nothing. Oh, here comes Big a lot damage. of damage. Poor little ghouls hopping on Katarina. Anyways, oh, make Katarina really pushed bad. back to tower. Looks yeah. like Bullaby is going to be going back. Maybe to buy his, uh, maybe to upgrade his potion. Maybe get a Reef Crystal, Longsword. Maybe a refill. Of Dante the pot. keeping, trying to keep up long with sword. as much CS. Longsword and potion. Looks like he's going to be going for a Phage or a Sterat. Jarum's Fist. That's true. Drum's Fist is going to be very effective. Or Sterax, but I doubt he can get that far to... Sterax is a, is a very cheap item, though. It is. We'll see what he picks, though. Katarina has not backed yet. I'm trying to stay in lane. Katarina. Might be a bit dangerous for her now that Yorick has an, uh, an extra item in two pots. Those ghouls do, do, do a very large amount of damage. Katarina going for one hit on him, getting ten gold from that. Throwing those blades. Old Katarina was where it's with that. Old Katarina. That this would have been a different story if this was old Katarina. Very true. Just spinning like a Beyblade. Ooh. Getting that grasp with your guy. Hitting him with that shovel. That shovel wasn't spinning anymore. That trade was a bit bad for Dante. But he is a level ahead of her. A lead of York. Level ahead of York. Katarina should keep an eye on these graves. I think um, Bulby is using his, what's that ability called where he throws out? Um, I just call it ghost vomit. Yeah, when he throws that out, he's actually not watching if his creeps are open or not, and this is where he could have actually used it. Oh, this whipping the it. ghost vomit. Ghouls are just going to be standing around. Oh, that's Dante is taking a very large amount of damage. Walking too close. Bulby did not punch the him. You're doing very strong damage, surprisingly. Yorick is getting close. Hit him Dante. With that oh, if, he, if one shovel hit. Oh, oh sliver, sliver of HP. Sliver of HP. Dante, not How even flinching. Very unfortunate. Dante did not even bother to use barrier or anything of the sort. That was very close. Dante staying for the wave. Yorick also <coughs> sees that. Might take advantage of it. Flash Q onto Katarina may work. He could be baiting out the flash Q because he could just bring out the barrier, get an ignite, get a couple tower shots, that could be game. But Yorick does still have exhaust. And Katarina having barrier. If he can react fast enough to the flash. Katarina with the level six. This ward is gonna be a very strong. Ability. It all depends. Oh, Dante walking them too close. Taking a bit of damage. Slight pex from Surprised the I didn't see a Q coming from Yorick from um for Katarina getting too aggressive in lane right there. Q is just a basic attack enhancer. Doesn't have a lot of range, so York has base range of 125. Summoning up his ghouls. 
very bad. Poor decision. Poor decision. Cool is just gonna die. Losing advantage. Seems like nothing much is gonna happen here. I was hoping to see Yorick go aggressive with the flash Q. Would have been a very bad decision. Yorick's out of mana. That's true. Katarina is Katarina. Alright. Seems like Yorick is backing. Took a little of late. Both of them are backing. Looks like Dante is gonna complete his back though. Or not. Both are staying back in lane. Looks like Katarina's playing this very passively. Just trying to. I think she's noticing that Yorick is wasting mo most of his abilities on summoning creeps and using his Q on minion. Dante's got to keep an eye on Yorick's mana right now. He wants to get a nice engage on this. Is this it? Oh, canceling the back from Yorick. Throwing us some nice out of space. You ain't going back. You stay here. Dante is playing is very uh, cocky right now, from what I can tell. Cannon minions in lane. This could oh. be a lot of extra damage. Yorick is not following up on that. Slamming that minion. Ooh. Looks like Yorick doesn't have enough for this caller, but those ghouls would just be just as deadly. The warding in the bush is interesting. This is a very spot for very bad spot <coughs> for Dante. Dante's got the bandit mastery. That's a interesting. Probably getting the extra gold to come back and get something. I I should perform your right. Right. Yep. Both of them. York has a at least twenty. Not twenty. Like He's got a fourteen CS. Fourteen CS lead. Doing very well. Dante may actually have to rely on getting a first blood on him. Looks like he's going to be doing just that. Getting a nice couple short trades. Going oh, for the Beyblade yeah. spin. Oh, the exhaust is coming out. The ignite. Barrier. Coming I think out. Dante's trying to shuffle back the wave. Yes. Bulby's out of mana. Can't do anything about it. His auto attacks won't be able to do that much damage in the first place. Don Bulby's out of very low. Oh, flash, the flash Another Bulby. sliver. Another sliver of health. How unfortunate is that? Never. I always remember. Dante still staying in lane. Oh, now? Dante, not even not even under the pressure. He's just looking at Bulby. Come at me. You want some of those ghouls. But he does. Katarina gonna get a nice one. Yes. Katarina's halfway there. Bulby at 71. It's gonna be very tough for Katarina. Yeah, and it has to be first blood now. Katarina cannot do anything right now. Katarina better keep an eye on that CS. Oh, looks like Bulby's gonna be going back for real. Katarina's gonna be farming the tower. It's a good decision for her. See if she can try to catch up with the ways. I doubt it, but it's at least something better than nothing. Sheen has been bought from Yorick. Looks like. Yep. Phage. Yep. Phage. So this Sheen. is a Trinity Force. Doubt he's gonna finish it, but. It's that enough damage. It's Getting gonna that be very strong. Yes, that 20% movement speed from Phage is gonna be really nice. 100% AD bonus. That extra health as well is going to be very nice for Yorick. It's a nice kachow. We'll see what Katarina has to buy. The extra mana, mana for Yorick is actually going to be very strong. Oh, wow. The extra mana is going to help him, seeing that he's been having mana problems this whole lane, lane so phase. Katarina bought two amplifying tomes and a cutlass. Looks like she's going to be going for the Hextech Gunblade. Waited for that extra pot. She might be able to do something here. Yorick's got 20 CS to go. 20 CS to go before he wins by default by CS. We'll see what Katarina can do here. All this time we were worried about Katari Katarina being ahead of CS because of those ghouls, but Yorick actually pulling ahead. All that mana did not go to waste on Yorick. Slamming those minions. Looks like Yorick's prioritizing CS right now. 85. 85, so close to this. It's two more waves. Dante actually has to do something here. Dante's got to learn from his predecessor, Zexter. Playing this in a farm lane isn't going to turn out well. Let's see if something happens. Both summoners are still down from both players. Dante's going in. His ultimate pops up W. Taking Doesn't a get lot the of destroy. damage. Bulby taking way taking damage. This caller oh. coming out with the ghouls. Let's see if Bulby can land. Like something. It looks like Bulby's just trying to zone Dante out, actually. Will he get the bomb it? He gets Does. the bomb it. Oh! That's here comes nice much damage. damage. Bulls are going in. This caller AI. Dante staying too close to that minion. Uh, lost aggro. As you can see, Miss Caller being 
Oh. Lost coming out. Oh! That's a very strong. Very strong Q coming out from Yori. The barrier was not enough to save Katarina's life. Not enough indeed. Looks like we're going to be going to a game three. That was a very intense match. Very despite intense. Being very, very, very slow. I really liked when I saw Dante go in with his ultimate uh, before this match. I was very close. Chunking out Bulbit was very nice. As I think he was expecting a back from York, but... Looks like Dante was just banking on that third barrier to just leave him with that sliver of health. But, you know what they say, third time's a charm? Yes, that's Sheen Prong. I think it was um, after the use of an ability gives you an empowered basic attack. Yes. That chunk through his barrier very quickly. Cleave it like butter. There's a flaming hot shovel. There's one more. See who's the Looks winner like of this. One one. Who will win the bayonetta? This is actually not a prize. Oh no. <laughs> good luck. Good luck, idol. Good luck. If this was a trophy, who? Not even related to League of Legends, but it'd be a nice trophy. Very similar games, indeed. Both got waifus. I'd like to see what they pick now, honestly. Seeing that Katarina from Dante was interesting, seeing that he had picked all AD champions and then switched to an AP. Dante losing that might have actually shook him up just a little bit. That's true. He might have to resort to going something that he knows how to play very well in 1v1. He might be so scared off that he might actually go to a control-based champion. That's true. Bulby was keeping very cool, <coughs> noticing that he was winning through CS, and he was just trying to stick to that. If I had to guess, that Bulby will be returning to like a previous pick. Mm -hmm. Rabies, maybe like Nasus. Or, or something that can lane clear quickly. Very true. Looks like Bulby is a fan of the CS victories, which everybody is sure to love. I think I think that was his strat is to make the um get to a CS victory and make the other person have to mm. go in for a first blood, because he's zoning them out early game and he cannot uh, the enemy the enemy cannot do much when he's zoning out and he's getting his CS into it. Bulby's miss uh, Bulby's miss caller during the game actually was very debatable. No, it wasn't a debatable. It was a very smart play, but Miss Caller AI, thank mm. you Rita Games, was actually just walk into the turret, run it down mid, mm -hmm. didn't really do much. More or less a waste of an ability. Looks like they're in champion select right now. Yes, we can't really see who they're picking. Very excited to see how this is gonna turn out. Yes, the, both of them are very, are under, some pressure knowing that both of them this is their last game both last legs one one. hanging they on by their fingernails i think bulby may not actually go passive here he might go an aggressive pick just to i'm end it gonna off. have to counteract that with i think he's gonna go even more control more control keeping them keeping the game long getting the cs yeah more resident sleeper resident sleeper may even go for the black for a vladimir pick the Vladimir pick would be interesting to see. He act has his own sustain, can clear minions, and has enough damage once he hits level six. Exactly. Especially with the bonus, the bonus of uh, damage mm -hmm. coming out from his ultimate that gives him empowered damage. Let's just call it DFG. The bonus DFG damage coming out from his ultimate could actually help him get a first blood. That's true. It won't even have to come to a CS lead. Well, we'll see what we have to do here. Is he going to pick a more controlled champion, or is he going to pick more aggressive? Dante will not change his playstyle. Dante will never change his playstyle. Yes, Dante is on the straight path of true aggro. Very aggressive. As we can, as we saw from last game with Katarina, he was not keeping a well CS lead. He was trying to, but noticed that York was getting a lead into that. Exactly. Just going for those short trades. Mm -hmm. Trying to poke him down. Maybe even get an all in. That's true. Looks like champions have been chosen. My eyesight is not good enough to look over the back of the tournament manager to see those tiny champion portraits well we'll just have to see it seems like they're gonna lock in um if i can see that well i see a leblanc pick i see a vein this will be very interesting if it's a leblanc versus a vein leblanc versus vein if i had to put it down nine times out of ten i'd give it to leblanc leblanc would most likely win vein has a very weak early game and has to pretty much rely on horrible early game her E is basically not an ability in mid lane. Mid lane is not very well. Unless LeBlanc plays it really bad and gets too close to a wall, but I doubt that LeBlanc will. Now, if this was old LeBlanc with Sigil of Silence. Ooh. <coughs> that that would have been very different. Those are the days. Those were the days. Sigil of Silence. LeBlanc. You just press Q, Q, Q R, W. Oh, look. Oh, God. You're I'll gone. I'll make your health bar disappear. Wonder it wasn't even happened. a joke. Wasn't it was even. just a straight up statement. Never forget the days of DFG. Miss you. Very interesting to see that. If it is a LeBlanc versus Vayne, LeBlanc wins 100% of the time. 
Unless very LeBlanc true. plays it very poorly, lets Vane get in, poke with a W or Q. Vane could also get a lot of nice reads mm -hmm. with the tumble, but if she can distortion if could just be too wide of an ability so that even with a smart read on the tumble, That's it might true. not even be enough. I think Vane might have to, if it's coming from Dante, I'm pretty sure that's coming from Dante. Dante will obviously have to run Barrier or Exhaust. Dante will always be running some sort of Ignite, mm -hmm. Barrier, Exhaust combo. If I had to guess, he's going to be running Ignite, Barrier. Yeah, the LeBlanc. LeBlanc burst is very much strong early game. Extremely strong. And LeBlanc can clear way very quickly with Distortion in Q. Distort. The new Q is actually, I haven't looked into that that much, but what I can tell is basically just Lissandra Q. Lissandra Q, Rise, it? something. Yeah. It just shatters yeah, all into um, the LeBlanc's minions. W actually is a lot like Rise's E, and her Q pretty much procs her, you know. LeBlanc's E is actually, da the damage is actually oh, increased Q, exponentially. Yeah. It's very scary. Very scary to see that. LeBlanc is very, it's going to be a very scary matchup if Vayne lets it get too far, gets her too far leveled up. That level 3 spike may be too much for Vayne. Very true. If I had to guess, maybe in a... LeBlanc will be taking Ignite 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Just Probably going to get an early level 3 spike or level 2 spike. What I have noticed, though, is that people are holding on to Exhaust a lot more and mm -hmm. not just instantly mo using it right off the bat. People are, seem to do seem to forget that Exhaust does lower damage and resistances, and it isn't just a slow. Mm -hmm. They're forgetting that. Most people just think an Exhaust is an ability to keep the person just slowed. not moving. Just slowed just a little bit. Just mm -hmm. a little debuff and attack speed. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's it a does lot a more. lot more than that. A lot scarier. I used to take that on Yi Jungle mm -hmm. from seasons 3 through 5. It's a very nice pick, actually. But what, what's really ta what's really nice to see is that Dante has not changed barrier whatsoever. But I think after seeing the ga um from losing to Yorick with that much Q damage coming from him, I don't think he can run barrier anymore. He might have to go full cheese and exhaust and ignite. Exhaust and ignite. Depending on who Bulby pick, so looks like oh. Bulby is going to be sticking Bulby. to the Yorick. Yes, we were correct about Dante. My eyesight is good enough. Thank you, glasses. Yorick starting off pretty standard start. Vane going Doran's blade and pot. Wow, very interesting. Vane is running ignite and flash. Look and at those webcams. They stood up already. Seems like something Game happened. Over. Highly doubt it. We'll see what happens. <coughs> All right, Bulby running. Oh, Dante is not respecting Bulby. Bulby walking Q. Thunderlords. Thunderlords on proc on Vayne. Both That's surprising. No fervor. No warlords. Oh, Dante's disrespecting Bulby. The first start of the game. Dante. There was no more side surfing. There was no more taunting. It was straight autos. Dante Looks like Dante's in it to win it. Very much. We'll be going back to base, obviously. Dante relying on his normal health regeneration so he doesn't have to back. Health regen, Quince. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Oh. Never forget, l time spent less dead, Quince. Those are where those are excellent investment in IP. You can get like whole five seconds. All right. Were you around when when revive was a thing? Yes. I m I loved revive. Revive was um. 800 seconds cooldown. Yeah. 12 that was, minutes. That was fun. That was actually very fun to... Move speed. Move speed. Yeah. I loved it. Like, just going move speed Ramus. Just run it down mid. Run it down Teleport mid. into their nexus and just like... Be done move. and over with. It'll be like two seconds. Alright. Looks like Dante's freezing the wave, actually. Or he's just autoing the cannon minions. I mean, the melee minions. Seems like he wants to keep close Never quarters. Mind. You were correct about that. Yeah. Freezing the wave. Freezing the wave, getting some damage in, take. rolling into a creep. Taking Yorick down with those silver bolts. Those aren't actually silver bolts yet. They're just kind of normal bolts. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of tumbles a little bit. Dante keeping up a good CS, making sure that Yorick... I think this is what Dante's doing. He's noticed that Yorick has been able to keep a good CS lead on him, and now he's just keeping him away from it. Purge with silver, Vayne says, and she's got the silver bolts on her deck. York is lacking a lot of mobility as a general champion, so getting those silver bolts onto him will be very easy. It's gonna be very hard for Bobby to deal with this. Oh, Dante takes Dante a, power shot. a power shot. I don't know if that was worth, but it was definitely worth. Dante got a lot of damage off of that, even more than the tower did to him actually. Yeah, 
ghost bomb coming out. Really level know. 3 spike on Dante. Level Bulby 3 spike on Dante? That's yeah. not a real thing. Uh, yeah. Level 2 spike? Yes, sorry about that. I'm saying about Yorick, he's a very low level. Dante's making sure that he can keep a very far CS lead. Oh, tumbling through that. That's a thing. I didn't know that. Did not know that either. Getting another Thunderlord's prop. It's Everybody's it's favorite it's mastery. Oh, one creep. Didn't Ooh. do any damage. A little Illuminati. Wow, Ooh. Bulby's. Wow. Oh, oh, the flash ignite. That was, that was so nice. Wonderful. Dante. Dante winning the tournament. Dante. Very aggressive play. Big. Knew his damage. Thunderlords ignite. Flashed Boom. into it dead. He Done gone. and over with. Very nice job from Dante. Very aggressive early game. Very nice from him. I knew I was very much expecting something like this from a vein. Exactly. I was very happy to see how aggressive Dante was playing. And didn't let it just pretty much. Dante knew that this had to be either a game I lose to CS or a game that I can win since he was a ranged champion, of course. Gotta win it early. Gotta win it early. Yorick is just rolling around in his grave. Oh, and we have the winner right here, Dante. Congratulations. Himself. Congratulations, Dante. C for your prize, you win a bayonet. Just Thanks. kidding. No, just kidding. Get out. All right. Should we get him a seat? All right. Get a chair. Yeah, give him a headset. Yeah, him a headset. Here you go. So Dante, how did you feel about this past match? Um, these two past matches or three past matches against Bulby? Uh, it was exciting. Very exciting. You yeah. Were, you were very aggressive in all of your games. Very aggressive with the Yasso and the Vein. It was so nice to see that you flash ignited after you knew that you can proc Thunderlords with your third. Yeah. So, seems like you're very uh, tense. How was that? Mm. No comments. No comments. <laughs> I just finished the game, man. All right. Um, how did you feel about your um, the overall win? How did you feel lo uh, almost losing to a Yorick? Well, you did lose to him, but through CS. Yeah. It's you knew you had to go in it to win it. Yeah. Like, I have no choice, so I have to just go all in. You had to go all in. Yeah. But you were not expecting that Q damage with the yeah. barrier. <laughs> yeah, it went straight through your barrier and instant killed you. Yeah. But it's worth, I guess. Yeah, it was worth, yeah. <laughs> So what what made you think that you had to pick Vayne for your last matchup? Uh, just felt like playing Vayne. Vayne, you just felt yeah, like playing Vayne. Yeah, just felt okay. like playing. Okay. Mm. And so, yeah. So what did you expect from your opponent to pick something else or to stick to Yorick from you know winning last game? I actually expected him to pick something else. Something else. Yeah, he's going Yorick again, so I'm gonna just punish him. Punish him. You're a ranged champion against Yorick. Yeah. Slow moving. That was nice. Okay, uh, sorry about that. But right. okay. No, so yeah, you won the tournament. Congratulations. Thanks. How mm. did it feel um going through uh, these many people fighting uh, them? Was yeah. there anything different you could tell or mm, not really. Not really. No. It was, just, it was just fun and exciting. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> No, right. but um, so wha what's with you playing aggressively? Is that just your play style, or is that um, you yeah, knew you had to play aggressive? It's my play style. That's your play style. That's yeah. good. I mean, if you play safe, it's just gonna be both both sides. See, I think. Right. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Cool. So I just know. Um, well, again, congratulations on your win. All right. Thank you. It was very nice to see you play. The very aggressiveness was very nice to see. All right, thank you. Yes, no problem. Hello, I'm back uh, after losing. Uh, that was great. <laughs> that was pretty fun, though. It, I had lots of fun. Uh, so we're wrapping up. We're done for today. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks to everyone for coming. Thanks to like all the people from like uh, the summer classes, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. That was pretty cool. Um, most probably next summer there'll be something like this. Or if you guys do come into school, we'd run this like every semester. Way more people, way more fun. It's pretty cool. Um, remember to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, follow on <laughs> Twitch. I hate doing all of that, but you know we we have to. The yeah. more the merrier. You know, uh, get into like our 
our Facebook page. We post all the events there. It's pretty cool. And thank you all for coming. Um, have fun, and we'll see you next time.